place. Does Viney have the speed? It doesn't look like she's got the chance to catch back up. She didn't even make it past the quarterfinals for the 500 meter race, her signature event. It definitely made me more hungry. I took a summer break after Pyeongchang just because I was so tired, I'm so done. But I was also like very hungry at the same time. Mame has channeled that hunger into her training over the last four years, overcoming physical setbacks like a knee injury and back problems and mental ones too dealing with depression and like anxiety and not knowing if I even wanted to skate anymore just because I was in a very difficult situation and a really tough situation. You're wanting to do really well, but you can't do really well and then you're blaming yourself as to why you're not doing well and then you're blaming other people and it's just like a whole thing. But mommy has found a way to center herself through therapy, check-ins with her mentor and through meditation apps. It's a support system that Mame, a spokesperson for our sponsor, Delta Airlines, also uses when she's traveling for competition and championships. The nighttime is definitely my time to just block everything out and like meditate. I have like an anxiety book too, and like I use that. So those are the times that I block off for myself. Armed with an unshakable sense of positivity and her megawatt smile, Mame says she's more prepared to compete in the Olympics this time around. Obviously, I want to win, I want to do really well, but I also don't want to put that pressure on myself. In 2018, it was very much like, I want to try to make everyone happy and I want to try to make everyone proud, but now it's more of like, I want to make me happy and I want to make me proud. I love that. All of the athletes talk about ways to deal with their anxiety and sure. something that we you can all learn to. from. Mm -hmm. Here's another thing that Mame does to calm her mind. She says she watches a lot of comfort TV shows. <laughs> like what? Right? Athletes are just like us. So she didn't yeah. give us specifics. I guess it's better than comfort food, which is what yeah. I turn to. <laughs> comfort TV shows. Just Olympians. anything you can binge watch and get under yeah. the covers and there watch. You, go. you can watch uh, Mame and the rest of the team, Team USA, compete at the Winter Olympics starting tomorrow on NBC and streaming on Peacock. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. In the city of angels, two kindly old ladies wanted to help homeless men get off the streets forever. And so they did. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, the new podcast from Dateline and Keith Morrison. I believe, I believe. Every dream, journey, and triumph. And it all starts here. United States, let's go! Feel the magic every day. The excitement is in the air. At the Winter Olympics, today is where the games begin. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? Our week-long journey across America from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. It's your last one. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? Okay, if you need a new show to binge, our pal Justin Sylvester has just what you're looking you for. You know what we love about Justin? He gets Every up bright and early. He looks happy. He is up. It is the crack of dawn in L.A. Justin, I know that you're tuned into everything. What is the hot new show we should be watching? Well, you guys, before we talk about that, I just need to correct you. Jenna, Hoda's not only in Marry Me, we're hearing Emmy nomination buzz <laughs> for Best I, Supporting Actress. That's what I okay? thought. Thank you. I'm so glad to hear Me that. Me and Michelle Buteau are going to duke it out, ma'am, for that role. Okay. So, so what are you watching, Justin? All right, you guys, I just started this new Netflix show, but bear with me because saying the title might just take up this whole segment. It's called The Woman in the House Across the Street from the Girl in the Window. Okay, try to say that five times. Mm -hmm. Kristen Bell plays Anna. She is a true crime-loving wino. I mean, who doesn't like to mix true crime with a little wine? You know, I, I personally like my Craig Melvin with a little Cabernet. But... 
This woman, everything in her life changes when she witnesses a murder outside of her window, mm. or did she? Now, the show combines two of my favorite things in the whole wide world, true crime and some risque TV. <laughs> so risque that K-Bell had to personally apologize to a viewer, and you will not guess why. Wait, what? Yes, well, a viewer was watching this movie this show with his mom and his girlfriend, and there was a rated R moment and turned the whole thing real awkward real quick. I mean, imagine watching Fifty Shades of Grey with your mother. Oh okay, it would be awkward. Oh, and she responded? Oh, oh wow. my God, that's hilarious. <laughs> she, oh, it was hilarious. Now, you know this is based on a true story, right? Uh -huh. I, Jenna, did I, did I leave the book in your, in your <laughs> office? Did you read it? No, I don't think so. Oh, the book is called The Man on the Plaza Across the Street from the Host in the Window. Now, I don't know about you guys, but there might be a lawsuit coming up. I can smell one. Okay, I can smell one. You can stalk us anytime. We love you. Okay, listen. We know you like sports a little, right? But this sports story, you're so yeah, you're just a into little. It. You're into this just one. Just a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Look, I don't know why we don't cover sports on The Scoop. I mean, men in tights, need we say more? But yesterday, Tom Brady announced his retirement after 22 years in the lead. Mm -hmm. Now, he did it with an Instagram statement longer than Mariah Carey's list of demands. <laughs> Seriously, I have read Harry Potter books shorter than this thing. But you know my little eye don't, don't miss anything. There was one major snub in those 25 pages of thank yous. I mean, the man thanked everybody. He thanked his families. He thanked the Bucks coaches, the city of Tampa Bay, the nacho lady at the concession stand in section 201. He did not mention the Pats what? after 20 years no. with them. Ooh, wait, okay? what? No, no, no. Now, I thought my little gay eyes were deceiving me because you know sometimes in the mornings it all it's all cloudy. So I called the Scoop Investigation Unit, copyrighted and trademarked. They found zero traces of the Pats, Bill Belichick, no. New England. I mean the man the was so savage out. he didn't what even mention Dunkin' Donuts. No, nothing okay. about the fans. Dunkin'. Oh, so what's happening? Is Twitter raining down? So everybody is freaking out. I mean, this would be like if Beyonce retired and didn't thank Destiny's Child. Like, <laughs> like if Jenna went to the U.S. Open and sat next to Brad Pitt and didn't invite Hoda, that would never no. really happen. Wait, you know what I mean? You in Savannah again? Okay. You know what? Yes. Why do you dig up old wounds? Yeah, Justin, oh. what are you trying to do here? I love here? some old tea. I love some old tea. <laughs> old tea. Old tea. All right, let's talk about Janet Jackson. She's got that new documentary out. Are the revelations in it? Like, is there new stuff? Okay, girl, the tea is so hot on this one that the FCC is requiring me to put up a warning, okay? Sip at your own caution. So Janet pulled the curtain all the way back on this one. After years of fans accusing Justin Timberlake of leaving Janet Jackson out to dry, including myself, yeah. in the documentary, Janet actually tells us that Justin reached out after Nipplegate immediately, and it was Janet Jackson who told him to say nothing. She wow. said that she was gonna take the fall for this. He was a young artist, you know, stepping out, and she knew that somebody had to go down. So she actually took the fall. How crazy is that? And are they friends today? They are still friends today. They have been in communication for so many years, and he actually invited her to perform on this year's Super Bowl, on the Super Bowl that he was on. Oh, wow, wow. he did? We love Janet yes. so much. We got we to love see this. We love Janet. All right, we thank you. We also love you even though you stirred some old, some old controversy. Yeah. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it's fine. She's fine about it. I love fine. you guys. It doesn't matter. No, it's fine. It's you, over. You can catch Hoda. Just, yeah, don't. Hoda hit her for Brad Pitt. How dare you not invite her to Brad Pitt? <laughs> I don't know. Justin, we have a long, we have a long commercial break to unpack. This, <laughs> you can catch Justin weekdays on the Daily Pop, our sister network E. We hope you're back with us for tomorrow on Today because we have a really special guest joining us. Jennifer Lopez. Jennifer. Wait, in the studio. What? Yeah, she's got a new rom-com. She's coming out. You guys are going to love that. And we'll see her and you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs>
Yo, today all day, up next on Hashtag Cooking, Sama Dada has the cure to your midday munchies. She's going to whip up four easy snacks so you'll always be prepared when hunger strikes. First up, Sama making one of Hoda's favorite sweet treats, dates stuffed with almond butter that can be served hot or cold. Then she bakes up a simple super maple almond granola. And finally, she's making popcorn that's spiced with garam masala. Say bye-bye to butter with a spicy snack. I'll just say this, okay? If you have a first date with one of these dates, you will be having more. <laughs> I can't with myself. <laughs> I cannot go a single day without snacking. Whether I'm at home or on the go, it is simply hashtag always snack time. Honestly, a world without snacking is simply not one I want to live in. So I cannot wait to show you three of my favorite weekly snack staples, my delicious stuffed dates, warm and frozen, my nutty maple granola, and my delicious masala popcorn. I love dates, and no, I'm not talking about the romantic kind, I'm talking about the medjool kind. They are my favorite sweet snack to eat throughout the day, and I'm gonna show you how to make them two ways, warm and stuffed, and frozen and dipped in chocolate. Most dates come with pits, so I've actually already pitted these. I've got about 10 here, so I'm just gonna now take them on a little journey to the microwave for about 10 to 15 seconds, just to get them really nice and warm and juicy. first date or a second date when you have 10 dates ready to be stuffed with almond butter. <laughs> Warming the dates brings out their already naturally golden and caramel flavor and then when you stuff them with almond butter, the heat actually allows the almond butter to melt so it gets really nice and gooey and delicious. I really already want to eat one right now. <laughs> okay, we're going to start stuffing them. So I've got a creamy almond butter here. You can also use a crunchy almond butter. You can use a peanut butter, a cashew butter. If there are any nut butters that you're harboring in your pantry, this would be a great time to use them. I'm pretty generous here. I would say I use about a teaspoon to two teaspoons just because I like a lot of almond butter, but you can totally choose however amount works best for your life. Because we've pitted the dates, it actually serves as a really nice pocket for the almond butter to just sit in, a little home, you know? It's like this date was meant for almond butter. You know what I mean? Right? Good form, I think. And I'm just gonna continue with the rest of my dates. So actually, Hoda saw this recipe on my Instagram and has now deemed it to be her favorite snack. You take a date, and remember I told you the whole thing? Yes. You nuke it, you put in some dark chocolate and, and some I almond butter. Yeah. You know what I like? <laughs> I like the melted chocolate in the peanut buttery nut butter thing with the salt. So Hoda, if you're watching this, it's for you. You can kind of see how when I put the almond butter inside this little pocket, it starts to melt a little bit and looks so gooey. Oh. It's like a little river of almond butter that I want to swim in. It's a lucky date. <laughs> ah, I crack only myself up. So for this recipe and a lot of the other recipes I make using dates, you want to make sure you're buying the medjool kind. I'll just say this, okay? If you have a first date with one of these dates, you will be having more. <laughs> I can't with myself. <laughs> Someone's got to hold me back from making another date joke because it will happen again. Okay, wait, this guy needs a little more almond butter. I'm so sorry I neglected you for a second. Okay. Okay, I am drowning in almond butter. All of my dates have been stuffed with the almond butter. They look really nice. They look ready to go out on a date. I need to stop. I'm done, I'm done, I promise. Now that I'm done stuffing all of the dates, I'm just gonna top it with a little bit of sea salt just to bring out that sweetness and balance everything out really nicely. I sometimes also like to use a salted almond butter too and that's gonna really create that naturally salty sweet combination, which we love. All right, 
And there you have it. My favorite warm stuff dates. My coffee companion. My favorite date. We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. In my opinion, you can never have enough dates, so I'm going to show you how to make another recipe using dates. They're frozen, stuffed with almond butter, and then dipped in chocolate. So we've got our dates already pitted, and now we're going to just go ahead and stuff them straight with almond butter. This should feel pretty familiar. Again, we're gonna have the almond butter find a nice little home in this pocket that we've created by pitting the dates. And remember, we are going to be submerging these in chocolate, so we wanna make sure that we don't overfill it with almond butter so that it gets a bit messy, even though we love a bit of messy chocolate. So sometimes when I look at my freezer and I'm like, where did all of the ice cream go? I make these instead. They're also super quick to pull together and use mostly what you have in the pantry. And if you're not keeping dates in your pantry now, take this as your sign to start. If you have a nut allergy, you can even use a tahini or a sunflower seed butter as well. And then when you're done freezing them, they seriously taste like a candy bar. I know you think I'm crazy, but they do, I promise. I eat them for dessert. I eat them as a snack during the day. There's so many things you can do with them. They really are the perfect date. Dates are the perfect date. They are. Sorry. And now for my chocolate. All I'm gonna do is melt it in the microwave with a little bit of coconut oil. This is gonna help it get nice and smooth and glossy. We're gonna do this in 10 to 15 second increments and we're gonna keep stirring throughout so it gets really nice and smooth. Put that straight in there. Got my spoon at the ready for stirring. And now I'm gonna head to the microwave. Now it is time to take our dates for a little swim in chocolate. I think they're excited about this, I'm not sure. Here's what we're gonna do. Grab a date, just drop it straight into the chocolate. Don't worry, it likes this. Roll it around so that the entire date is coated. Make sure you get that residual chocolate to kind of drip off the sides of the spoon like this. And now we're just gonna place it back onto our parchment paper. And now we're going to chocolate swim and repeat. This is like a very luxurious bath, I have to say, for the dates. Because we've stuffed these dates with almond butter, we wanna make sure we're rolling it in the chocolate a little bit gently, just so that the almond butter doesn't come out. It's okay if you get a little messy here. It's part of the game. It's part of the date. No, that wasn't good. Serve this to your next date. 
That was better. That was good. That was good. Will I ever stop making date jokes after this? No. Nope. Don't expect me to stop. No, nope. that's not gonna happen. It's part of my brand now. One final date. <laughs> yeah. Now, just for good measure, I'm gonna add a little drizzle of chocolate on top. It's gonna make it look really pretty. I don't believe in less is more when it comes to chocolate. I think we always need more chocolate. If you don't like chocolate, I wanna understand you. Please drop me a line. But also, if you don't like chocolate, that's fine. Like, it's totally okay. But I still wanna understand you. <laughs> okay. Now I'm just gonna top them with a little flaky sea salt. This is really gonna bring out that sweetness, balance out the chocolate. It is the perfect combination. I'm using a flaky sea salt as well, so it looks really pretty and a little fancy. Okay, we're salted. And now we're ready for the freezer. Can we take a moment? Look at how cute they look. These dates are ready for their date. Gotta stop making date jokes. Okay. These are honestly so good because of the chocolate, because of the almond butter and that little flaky sea salt. They seriously taste like a candy bar. America's favorite candy bar. You know what I'm talking about. Plating my hot dates with my frozen dates. We're going on a lot of dates today. They honestly look so good. I love them. You know what? I need to take a picture of these to send to Hoda. I know this is her favorite snack. She's gonna love the chocolate ones too. These dates are fully ready for their close-up. It's almost unfair. All right, got the shot. I think it's time for me to taste. I mean, look at that. Mmm. It is so good. The dates are so sweet. The almond butter works so well. That salt, it's making everything come to life. I knew there's a reason why I eat these every day. Now that my dates are done, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. Let's keep this between us. Granola is super easy to make at home. I'm gonna get the ingredients so I can show you how. News is happening now. Are you ready? Look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. Tonight, the major announcement of the COVID vaccine. And this is a significant moment. Your news, whenever it happens, wherever you are, it's here now. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet right here. Rioters bang down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. The Sunday Sit Down with Willie Geist podcast. It's the conversations you want to have with the people you'd love to meet. Get your money's worth. Unedited, unfiltered. See ya. Sit down with Willie and listen wherever you get your podcasts. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. 
Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Granola is one of my favorite things to make at home. It's super versatile, so you can eat it solo, just munch on it as you're going about your day, or serve it with your favorite yogurt or milk. I'm gonna show you how to make my favorite nutty maple granola. For any granola recipe, I like to separate my wet and dry ingredients. We wanna make sure that all of the ingredients are thoroughly incorporated, so that's why I'm gonna do this. I've got some melted and cooled coconut oil here, and I'm just gonna add the rest of my ingredients. I'm using some of my almond butter. And this is gonna serve as a really nice mixture for the oats and nuts and seeds and whatever else we're adding to this granola to really cling onto so we can get those really crunchy clusters. And clusters are why we're all eating granola in the first place anyway, right? Almond butter is in. To sweeten it up, we're gonna add some maple syrup. This is the maple portion of my nutty maple granola. Maple adds this really nice golden richness to the granola. It's so good. It's really lightly sweet, so it's not too sweet. I've got all my wet ingredients in my bowl, and now I'm just gonna whisk it until it's nice and smooth. Be careful here. Wear an apron. I don't do it, but you should. <laughs> we're whisking, and we're whisking. And I just wanna whisk this until it's nice and smooth, making sure that all the ingredients are thoroughly incorporated. Okay, wet ingredients, we're gonna set them aside. They're gonna hang out for later. And now I'm gonna get to work on my dry ingredients. Because I like to maximize the presence of clusters in my granola, it's very important to me, I'm gonna crush my nuts before I add them into my oats. So in order to do this, all you have to do Add your nuts into any sort of bag. Take a rolling pin or even a bottle and just get your stress out like this. You can also roll them if you're more delicate, but I'm really going for it today. I promise I'm a very patient person in general. We want them to be coarsely crushed, but it's okay if we have some bigger or smaller pieces because it's nice to have some texture with our granola. We like the crunch. Okay, I've got my bowl of oats right here. And now I'm just gonna add all of my dry mix-ins in. Adding my pecans in here. My stress pecans, the result of my stress pecans. I should also say that if you've got any nuts or seeds that have just been hanging out in your pantry for a little too long, this is a great opportunity to use them up. I'm adding some almonds in now. It's gonna use some cinnamon here. You can also use some nutmeg if you'd like, really whatever you'd like. And then we're gonna add a little pinch of salt and now I'm just gonna fold in all my dry ingredients together. Make sure everyone gets to know each other. It's very friendly granola. Now that I've mixed all my dry ingredients together, I'm just gonna add in my wet ingredients and mix everything together. Okay, here we go. It's very aesthetically pleasing. This wet mixture is really what's gonna help this granola have clusters, so I like to make sure when I am mixing both the wet and dry ingredients together that everything is really nicely coated. Okay, listen closely. The really important thing when you're making granola is to make sure that everyone has some personal space. So we wanna make sure that all of the oats and nuts in this entire mixture is spread out in a very even layer so everyone has room to breathe. By spreading everything out, we're also gonna make sure it bakes in a very even and crisp layer. And we're just patting everything down really gently, spreading it out nicely. We don't wanna pat anything too hard to crush any of the nuts. 
Now that everything is spread out, I'm just gonna go bake in the oven at 325 degrees for about 30 to 40 minutes. While our granola is baking, we want to make sure that we're stirring it every 10 to 15 minutes so we can ensure an even and crisp bake. Spread it out evenly again. And then back in the oven we go. The secret to super crispy, crunchy, clustery granola is actually letting it cool completely before you break it apart and serve it. I know it's tempting, but just don't touch it for a little bit, okay? This granola is completely cool, so now I'm just gonna break it apart and add it to my plate. I mean, you just can't. You can't say no to this. This is crazy. Look at how crunchy. The clusters are what I live for. It's the only reason I eat granola. Like, this is the most satisfying thing to me, ever. I will break it apart, though. Just a little bit. We want to maintain those clusters, though. I'll take granola over a granola bar any day. That's just me. And did you see how easy it was to throw this together? You literally just combine both your wet and dry ingredients and you've got this super delicious, one pan, amazing granola. And look at this bake. It's so even, so golden and crispy. Okay, it's time for me to taste waiting to dig into this cluster this entire time. Lightly sweet from the maple syrup, not too sweet, so it's a perfect breakfast companion. Or honestly, you could eat this at any time of the day. You could even top ice cream with this. It's a really nice, crisp, golden layer on top of some vanilla ice cream. Ooh, sign me up. You know what, my dad loves this recipe. I make it for him all the time. Let's send him a picture so he can be a little bit jealous of me in it too. <laughs> so he can remember my face. <laughs> he knows what I look like. <laughs> He's gonna be so jealous. Mm. So good. Speaking of my dad, this next recipe is inspired by him and something he used to make all the time. So I'm gonna go grab the ingredients and start popping some popcorn. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? week-long journey across America from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. Is your last one. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet right here. Rioters bang down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. This is a variation of a popcorn recipe that my dad used to make all the time. Poor guy, my mom, my sister, and I would always steal some before he could even have a single kernel. So I guess this is redemption for him. I'm gonna show you how to make your popcorn 
really delicious, really flavorful with this spice infused olive oil mixture. So I've already popped my popcorn and now I'm just heating my pan on medium low heat and add a little bit of olive oil. You can use your favorite spices here, but I'm gonna use one of my favorites, which is some garam masala. This is a really common blend of Indian spices and it's really delicious, really warming, creates a very savory flavor in this popcorn. Gonna add this straight to my oil. Along with some cayenne pepper, this is gonna take it up a notch in the spice department because I like things very spicy. Finally, I'm gonna add a little pinch of salt. And now all we're gonna do is just stir our spices. Now the reason that we're heating the spices here in the oil is because nobody likes a raw spice. Raw spices are not cute to eat. So we want to cook the spices with the oil so they become fragrant, they become aromatic, and it just infuses a lot of flavor into your popcorn. I was so obsessed with popcorn in college, I'm pretty sure it's the only reason I made it through. I would just snack on it like all the time. It got me through my exams. Thank you, popcorn. It's done so much for me in my life. And you wanna make sure you continue to stir your spices in with the oil so it doesn't burn. We're only doing this for about a minute or so until you smell that delicious aromatic spice smell. You don't want it to smell too raw. When you allow the garam masala to cook in this oil, you can really smell all of those individual spices, the cumin, the cloves, the coriander. It smells so fragrant. So my spices and my oil smells really aromatic. I've cooked it for about a minute. Now it's time to just drizzle it over my popcorn. There we go. I'm just gonna shake it up so everything is fully incorporated in here. Now I'm gonna drizzle it over my popcorn. It smells so good. Now I'm just gonna toss it so that everything is well incorporated. This is just a really great way to make a flavor infused popcorn so that you're not just going with the plain salt, you're not just going with the plain butter, there's a little something extra going on. Now that my spices are fully incorporated in my popcorn, I'm gonna add a little bit of nutritional yeast. This adds a very cheesy and savory flavor to the popcorn without actually adding any cheese. Perfect. Mix that in a little bit. And then I'm gonna finish with a little pinch of salt. I have to show my dad that I made this. It's a little bit better than his. Don't tell him. <laughs> I'm so mean. <laughs> it smells so good. I seriously wish you could smell it. I cannot wait to dig in. So I'm just not going to wait. I'm going to dig in. Oh, come on. OK, this might be dramatic but I don't think I can eat regular popcorn ever again. Mmm, it's so good. And again, you can use your favorite spices here. You can even do a little salt and pepper, a little garlic powder. Really make it your own, but just know that I have a feeling you will not go back to regular salted popcorn. Butter? Who is she? Mmm, it's so good. It's really good. You guys should try this. The next time you get a snack attack, all I have to say is just don't panic. Remain calm. Make these three recipes. They're so delicious and the best way to keep your days going. guys, super busy, cooking up a storm, but I have something exciting to tell you. Hashtag cooking is back, so tune into today all day. Okay, I got some in the oven, I gotta go. See you later. Hi 
there, I'm Jill Martin. As a lifestyle contributor for The Today Show, I've been bringing you small investments that make a big difference in your life. Here on Shop Today, we bring you the biggest names, the hottest products, and the ultimate tips on how to use them. And we have new technology that helps you get these items home with just one click. It's an epic and fun shopping experience you can't find anywhere else. This is Shop Today with me, Jill Martin. As we kick off the month of February, it's all about love. I'm sharing my it list of items I love that are perfect for a special someone in your life, and trust me, they're so good, you might just want one for yourself, too. And if you're looking for an instant refresh for your beauty routine, look no further, because I've got the perfect seasonal staples you're sure to fall head over heels for. Plus, joining us later is award-winning actor and producer Kate Beckinsale with beauty secrets she loves and her exciting new skincare line. So be prepared to shop and get smitten. Shopping with us is easy. Do you see the QR code at the bottom of your screen? It will be there throughout the show, giving you instant access to my product picks. All you need to do is this. Open the camera app on your smartphone or tablet, point the camera to the screen and hold your phone there until your device recognizes the QR code and shows you a notification. Just tap the notification to open the link and start shopping. You can also text SHOP to 34318. Plus, we've created a special destination on today.com where you can shop all the items you see on today's show. Simply visit today.com slash shop all day to get a head start on your shopping and take advantage of some of Shop Today's exclusive deals. It's the month to celebrate all kinds of love for a partner, a friend, your mother, even your coworker. And don't forget the most important person, yourself. With Valentine's Day right around the corner, so many of us are looking for the perfect way to express our love and gratitude. So I found eight of the best items to inspire you to spread love. First up, a comfy addition to your closet, loungewear and bralettes from Skims. I live in these. These cozy sets are getting so much buzz on social media, and it's not hard to see why. Noted for its co-founder, Kim Kardashian, Skims has been revamping the shapewear industry these past few years. Today we have their various bralette styles, like the Fits Everybody line. These are buttery soft and stretched to fit you. Bralettes are perfect to wear all day long because they are so comfortable. Plus, perfect for the colder winter, the Skims lounge sets are luxurious and cozy. Prices for the loungewear and bralettes start at $32. It's a small investment that's going to make a big difference. These are major. Next up, an absolute must, something you don't know you need until you get it, the Asakuki Essential Oil Diffuser. Well, humidifiers are so important this time of year for those who suffer from dry skin like me or have trouble sleeping like me. Plus, the essential oil diffuser can help create a calming environment and give off a wonderful aroma. It comes in four different colors and goes for less than $30. This is a thoughtful and practical present for someone needing to reset and refresh. Moving on to some self-care. It is so important to tailor your skincare routine to your own needs, and that's why Vanity Planet Skin Reporter is so special. Here's how it works. All you need is a smartphone. Snap a photo of your clean face and upload it onto the Skin Reporter. Within 30 seconds, you'll receive your results and a recommendation of curated products all designed to tackle your key skincare concerns. So I did it, and here are the products recommended for me. The Facial Steamer, the Skin Spatula, and the Sonic Facial Brush. And the best part, the Skin Reporter is free to use and the offered Vanity Planet products start at $59, specialized for you. Okay, next up. The Gratitude, a day and night reflection journal. You know how important these journals are for me. This 90-day journal includes both morning meditations and evening reflections. Using a journal like this every day really encourages you to take a moment of pause in your busy routine. It's so important for your mental health. The journal is less than $15. 
Another thoughtful way to show your appreciation, especially for someone who has everything, a great book. And the Paper White from Kindle is an updated take on a classic gift. All right, here's the deal. The new Kindle is now equipped with a bigger screen, thinner borders, and an adjustable warm light. Plus, the brand says the battery lasts up to 10 weeks. That's weeks. With your Kindle, you can pack all of your favorite books on one device. No more lugging all those heavy hardcovers on your next trip. And bonus, if you're headed somewhere warm, the Kindle Paper White has a glare-free display, even in bright sunlight. The Kindle can hold thousands of titles, which is incredible. Prices start at just under $140, a great investment. Okay, so every good read needs a comfy pillow. So let's start with this amazing Pluto pillow. This is the perfect upgrade for your sleep routine. And you've never had a pillow like this before because this one is literally made for you. The pillow is customized based on your body stats, sleep position, and preferences. All you have to do is go to the brand's website, fill out a quick questionnaire. There are over 35 variations of pillows based on your results. But no matter what your style, all are made from a solid foam core and outer plush. The standard Pluto pillow retails for $95 or you could get a king one for $115. Scan the QR code to get started. All right, next up, something to help you or someone you love stay organized. You know I love an organizational product. This is a game changer product for that person that can't seem to find anything in their purse. Meet the Lexion Bag Organizer. Now this organizer will help upgrade any purse in a second. It has 13 pockets, okay? And five different sizes, so you can get one for every different purse in your closet. The bag organizer will keep all of your electronics, makeup, and everything organized, and you simply take it from one bag, you just put it in, and then when you're done, everything's already in there, and you wanna switch bags, you could just put it in another. This is awesome. It's made out of a soft wool blend and comes in a range of colors to match your bag or mix it up and use it as a pop of color. And forget the bag, you can use these organizers in your car or even as a toiletry kit. The bag organizers begin at less than $16. These are great. Okay, while you're on the go, here's a must have for these colder months, the perfect down vest. I love this one from Amazon Essentials because it's packable, lightweight, water resistant, and affordable. Each vest comes with a carrying bag with a drawstring closure, perfect for travel, plus it's machine washable. The vest comes in a wide range of colors and in cool prints like camo and animal. There's a color for everyone in your life, for every personality. This is something that you'll wear throughout the season and into next, and it's great to layer. It retails, get this, for just $28. Well, that wraps up my Things We Love It List. Let's run through the products one more time. We have the bralettes and loungewear from Skims, the Asakuki Essential Oil Diffuser, the Skin Reporter from Vanity Planet, the Gratitude Journal, the Paper White from Kindle, the Custom Pillow from Pluto, the Lexion Bag Organizer, and the Packable Down Vest. To shop these products, scan the QR code below for instant access to all the items you'll see on today's show. You can also text SHOP to 34318 or head to today.com slash shop all day. And just so you know, today may make a commission for purchases made through the QR codes or links on today.com. Coming up, we're bringing you the absolute best in beauty to instantly refresh your skincare routine. And later, mega star Kate Beckinsale joins us with her secrets to that Hollywood glow and insider tips you're sure to love. All that and more coming up only on Shop Today. I believe, I believe. Every dream, every journey, every triumph. And it all starts here. Let the celebration begin! The excitement is in the air. The United United States States wins the wins is he superhuman? Feel the magic every day. She is a superstar. <laughs> Kayla, we are cheering <laughs> you are on. Show and share every moment with us at the Winter Olympics. Today, today, today. today. today is where the games begin. The Sunday Sit Down with Willie Geist podcast. It's the conversations you want to have with the people you'd love to meet. Get your money's worth. Unedited, unfiltered. See ya. Sit down with Willie and listen wherever you get your podcasts. 
We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Our week-long journey across America, from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. It's your last one. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Welcome back. We're celebrating love all month long on Shop Today. And what better way than by showing yourself and your skin a little TLC. The winter weather can be brutal for your skin, but with these products, you're sure to instantly refresh from drab to fab. First up, okay, if you know me, this should be chained around my neck. I always have it. The Chanel Rouge Coco Gloss Moisturizing Glossomer. Now this is an investment, but I use this, I love it, and it gives me that absolute shine. It's my go-to gloss. It uses a non-sticky, ultra-light formula that leaves your lips smooth and plump. It features a dual-side applicator, and it's you hear it. I mean, it's just so fabulous. It's available in 24 shades. This is my shade. It's 726 icing. A lot of you ask me about this. And it's a luxurious upgrade for your everyday gloss, or you could pick a bolder color for a night out. And new gloss is such a great gift to make someone feel special. You could write the card, sending you a kiss. It retails for $32. Scan the QR code now to see all of the incredible options. Moving on to the ultimate multitasker, the Beauty Color Haze Multi-Use Pigment from Ilia Beauty. The Color Haze is a game changer. It's a creamy multi-use pigment for blush and lip all in one. Add a natural finish for an everyday flush or build the product for a bolder statement. This multitasker is great to pop into your purse for those moments you need just a little extra wow, a little pop. The Color Haze comes in five different shades with both warm, neutral, and cool undertones. It retails for $32, and a little goes a long way. Next up, the ultimate self-care must-have. Meet the Essarora Ice Roller. I literally use this every single night and morning because it's perfect when you wake up with puffy eyes or just need a mini spa moment. All you have to do is put the roller head into the freezer and then gently roll on a clean face. It feels so great when you do this. It's really so relaxing. It's part of my routine. The ice roller sells for just under $18, comes in blue, green, purple, or red, whatever the color. Trust me on this one, this is a must have. Okay, next we have two amazing products from Josie Marin. If you haven't heard of this brand, they specialize in beauty with 100% argan oil in every formula. First, we have the Intensive Daily Repair Body Butter from their new Argan Apothecary line. They just launched this year. The body butter is soothing to whip moisturizer that contains great ingredients like shea butter, aloe leaf juice, and argan oil. The packaging is also gorgeous. It comes in a pretty blue jar, so it would make a great gift and it's fully recyclable. This goes for $46 and it's a pretty big jar, so it will go a long way. Now, another special item from Josie Marin targets an area we can all use help with. That sensitive under eye area. Meet the Argan Pro Retinol Eye Cream. The brand says this ultra rich formula works to firm and smooth your skin to help with deep puffing and dark circles. It's made with pink algae, a natural source of vitamin A to help plump up the skin, green coffee extract for that extra boost, and of course their signature 100% pure argan oil. Plus, it's gentle enough to be worn day or night. The eye cream retails for $42. Next up, the new Skin Renewing Nightly Exfoliating Treatment from CeraVe. Perfect if your skin is feeling just dull. The brand says this exfoliating treatment will help brighten. It's made with a blend of glycolic and lactic acids to help promote your skin's natural exfoliation. The brand says it's designed to smooth fine lines and reduce the appearance of wrinkles and dark spots. This product is a great way to renew and restore that natural radiance 
plus super affordable. The exfoliating treatment retails for just under $25. And lastly, round out your nightly skincare routine with Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask. It has a cult following. We're all obsessed with it here. Simply apply generously before bed and wake up with soft, moisturized lips or use it throughout the day to keep your lips extra hydrated. The lip mask comes in berry, vanilla, which is what I use, sweet candy, and gummy bear. This makes a great gift. It's an unusual gift, but a great one because it's a special treat to use every night. It retails for $22 and it comes with the applicator. Now that wraps up our instant refresh. Let's go through the products one more time. We have the Chanel Rouge Coco Gloss Moisturizing Glossomer, the Ilia Beauty Color Haze Multi-Use Pigment, the S Aurora Ice Roller, the skincare products from Josie Marin, the CeraVe Skin Renewing Nightly Exfoliating Treatment, and the Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask. To shop these products, scan the QR code below for instant access to see all the items you'll see on today's show. You can also text SHOP to 34318 or the old fashioned way, head to today.com slash shop all day. Next up, don't go anywhere because I'm sitting down with superstar actress and producer Kate Beckinsale to talk all things we love, including her skincare line. And later, we found the best buzzworthy items you're sure to fall for this season. In the city of angels, two kindly old ladies wanted to help homeless men get off the streets forever. And so they did. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, the new podcast from Dateline and Keith Morrison. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. In the city of angels, two kindly old ladies wanted to help homeless men get off the streets forever. And so they did. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, the new podcast from Dateline and Keith Morrison. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Our week-long journey across America, from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. It's your last one. <laughs> <laughs> Who's talking smack part of this? This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back to Shop Today. We're celebrating love all month long, but while we're gifting to all those special people in our lives, we can't forget self-care too. That's why I sat down with actress, model, and producer, the amazing Kate Beckinsale, to chat about all things love and wellness, plus all the details about her new skincare line, Marvel Skin Solutions. Take a look. Hi, Kate, it's so nice to meet you. So nice to meet you too. First of all, it was on the other night, still one of my all-time favorite movies. I can't believe it's been 20 years since Serendipity. Yes, it has. It has been 20 years. They sent me some commemorative ice cream. <laughs> Did they? Yeah. Yeah. It's a nice thing to have been in a film that's associated with a very cute restaurant that has great ice cream. Isn't it surprising to you when I say 20 years ago? It's funny because I, I didn't kind of come and do American movies until I had a little baby. So that kind of tracks. She's She was, you know, I don't know, 16 months when I did Serendipity. Has she seen that movie? No. 
<laughs> no interest. Uh, well, this episode, we're picking all the things that we love. It's the month of love and Valentine's Day is coming up. Is that a holiday you like historically or? I didn't like it when I was growing up at all. I, mean, that was the I went to a girls school, so it was quite unusual for anyone to really get any attention on Valentine's Day. And now? It sort of depends on the, my circumstances. I tend to involve my daughter and my mom. I like making fuss on holidays. My Christmas tree is still up, you know. That's interesting because I believe in keeping the holidays in your home as long as you can. It's happy. Last year it stayed up till March. I'm not going to have it stay up till March this year. That's silly. But, you know, within the next week or so, it'll probably come down. You've accomplished so much as an actor, as a producer, and now you're in skincare. So why was it so important to you to bring this into your world? It's lovely to have a beauty line, but like the most important thing was it actually works. I really like how it feels. It's an interesting new thing that no other skincare um, line has. I think we need to dive into the scorpion venom a little bit because it's not often you get to first say it in a sentence, but then associate it with beauty products. So talk to us about scorpion venom. When they said, you know, we're using scorpion venom, my first thing, obviously I'm a big animal lover and, and was like, you're not crushing scorpions up, are you? And they were like, no, absolutely not. Um, so I guess they have this kind of extremely nice living area and this island for all these scorpions and then sort of gently they're milked by hand, which sounds crazy, but has all these incredible, you know, rejuvenating properties and doesn't harm the scorpions. The Arnica Recovery Cream, which I actually used the other night. Um, tell me why you love this. It is so moisturizing. It's super moisturizing and kind of fluffy. It's incredibly soothing, brings down redness and any kind of anything that feels slightly inflamed on your skin. I should say a lot of your products are investment products, but a little goes a long way. I've been using the same bottles of all of mine since June and I still have quite a bit left. So you don't have to use tons and tons of it. Excuse me. Oh. <laughs> Your Instagram star. Yes, yeah, that one's the, probably the most inquisitive. I've been following you on Instagram. It's like a zoo there. I mean, you have a lot going on. So tell me about each of them because they all make appearances on your social media. I do. I have a, I have a dog and two cats. So the oldest cat is, uh, he's 17, so I've had him a long time. Um, and his name is Clive. And he's the one that likes to wear outfits, like actively likes it. The other ones will wear them, but he enjoys it. I believe in finding a beauty routine. You're a big bath person, I was told. I really don't like to go from day to night without submerging my entire body in water. I would feel not right. I love a bath. I usually have it as hot as I possibly can get it and sweat it out for a bit. Aside from your line, what's one beauty secret of yours? Um, I had a doctor who told me that she had a patient who was in her 90s and had the most incredible skin and that this woman was constantly uh, uh, putting buttermilk, quite a lot of it in her bath. So I was like, okay, buttermilk is extremely reasonably priced. I quite frequently will dump two or, two or three quarts of buttermilk in the bathtub and uh, I think it is, it, it's pretty great. And inexpensive, how often do you do that? Once or twice a week, depending how fancy I'm feeling, yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And I continue to watch you um, amuse us through oh, your uh, social media. So thank oh, you for much. that. Thank you so much. It's lovely meeting you. Isn't she incredible and funny? Thanks, Kate, for such a great conversation. To shop these products and find more from Kate Beckinsale's skincare line, scan the QR code below for instant access. You can also text SHOP to 34318 or head to today.com slash shop all day. Well, just ahead, we have all the buzziest buys you are sure to fall in love with. That's coming up only on SHOP Today. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter, in this closet. I took shelter, right in this closet, right here. 
rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. I believe, I believe. Every dream, journey, and triumph. And it all starts here. United States, let's go! Feel the magic every day. The excitement is in the air. At the Winter Olympics, today is where the games begin. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon. And by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Welcome back to Shop Today. Today we're celebrating all things love and whether you're shopping for a friend, partner, or even yourself, these buzzworthy gifts are so nice, you just might wanna buy them twice. Okay, first off, I've never seen anything like this. The Noonie Marshmallow Whip Maker. Stay with me here. This product transforms any of your cleansers into a rich marshmallow-like foam. All you need is a pearl size amount of product and a little bit of water to make a full container of foam. And what I like best about this, not only does it feel luxurious, it makes your products last longer. Plus, it's easy to wash, so you could use it over and over again. The Noonie Marshmallow Whip Maker retails for just $7. This is worth the try. Now that we've upgraded our cleanser, moving on to serums. Meet Herbivore's Cloud Jelly Plumping Hydration Serum. In these dry winter months, a hydration serum is a must. This one is made with a non-sticky hyaluronic acid alternative that's perfect for dull, dehydrated skin. Plus, listen to this, it's made with mushrooms. Tremella mushroom is a key ingredient in this cult favorite, and the brand claims it can hold up to 500 times its weight in water. It goes for $48. Next up, if you tried the gua sha trends, a lot of you have, I know, you need this. The Combing Therapy Set, Comb and Scalp Essence from Momi. This set comes with a brass gua sha comb and scalp essence. So you apply the essence to damp, clean hair and then gently comb the curves of your head with the gua sha to help relieve tension and stimulate circulation. And who doesn't love a head massage? This is an amazing gift, feels like you're in a spa and it's a great gift for yourself. It retails for $84. And lastly, complete your own self-care moment or gift to someone you love with the Patchology Serve Chilled Bubbly Eye Gels. Now, I tried a lot of these out, and this is why I love these. They're simple to use. You simply place the eye gels on your under eye for 10 minutes or longer. I leave it on for 10, and it will leave you feeling relaxed and refreshed. What I love best, you could pop them into the fridge for an extra cooling effect. These refreshing eye gels come in a 15-pair jar of one-time use eye gels. The 15-pair jar retails for $35. So that's it for my buzzworthy picks. Let's recap the products one more time. We have the Nuni Marshmallow Whip Maker, the Herbivore Cloud Jelly Plumping Hydration Serum, the Combing Therapy Set, Comb and Scalp Essence from Momi, and the Patchology Bubbly Eye Gel. To shop these products, Scan the QR code below for instant access to all the items from today's show. You can also text SHOP to 34318 or head to today.com slash shop all day. And that wraps up this episode of SHOP Today. It went so fast. I love shopping and celebrating love with all of you. I want to send an extra special thank you to the incredibly glamorous and gracious Kate Beckinsale for sharing her timeless beauty tips and favorite products from her new line. I hope you found just the thing you need for a special gift of love this season. And I hope you'll tune in next month for a special Shop Today show highlighting some of the most incredible
incredible female founders and business owners in honor of Women's History Month. You won't want to miss the stories and the exclusive deals. Until then, wishing you lots of love and gratitude. See you next time. Andy, good to see you, my friend. Hey, Willie. You are the number one brand ambassador for this show, Sunday Today. Well, because I love my mug. You've got the mug. I almost brought it because we are close to my house and I walked over and I was going to bring it. It's in the dishwasher. What's the past 18 months been like for you? The time when, you know what? The pandemic actually for me has been okay. Uh, I have been able to work during the entirety of the pandemic of which I feel very grateful. And then I've gotten to spend an inordinate amount of time with my son that I never would have uh, gotten. And that's been frankly incredible, especially as a single parent, to be able to really, I try to spend as much time obviously as possible with him, but I feel an extra weight on me as a single parent sure. to really let him see that I'm around. As long as I've known you, you've talked publicly and privately about wanting to be a dad sometime down the road. Yeah. And now you are. Yeah. How has the reality been compared to those expectations? You it's had? actually been an easy ride so far. I mean, it's been, you know what? It's been all right. I thought that it was going to be completely overwhelming. And I actually feel like he has been trying to make it easy on me a little bit. And he's just, he's a good guy. He's very nice. He's very Where's sweet. Daddy? He's starting, he's yes. becoming a three-nager. Yes. Is that the oh, term? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so that just started last weekend. And um, so that was interesting. We were supposed to have a movie night Friday night, and I was so excited about it. But he then started to show his <laughs> will and I had to take the movie away. And guess who was the real loser in that? Me. Because I was then screwed on a Friday night. I was like, what am I doing? Right. Now you got two hours to fill. Exactly. I was very, I was actually more upset than him <laughs> that I took the movie night away. So I'm not sure what lesson was taught. What's he into, like, in terms of movies and what's his You thing? know what? He has not watched much TV or movies just until this summer. And so what he's really into right now is Sesame Street. Great. Uh, which is great. And he, I let him watch it on the weekends. It's his treat. No TV during the week. And I will say, I screen an inordinate amount of Housewives, and he's always coming up to my desk while I'm watching. And I'm like, no, 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 <laughs> you are not watching this. You are not watching this. Um, he saw me grilling Erica Jane on a Housewives reunion <laughs> the other day. He's like, Daddy, Daddy. I'm like... Yes, but no. Yeah. So it sounds like you've, uh, you guys have had all this bonding time, and, and being a, a single parent, like you say, has its challenges. Yes. How do you navigate that part of it? Um, just one day at a time, and luckily I have um, several jobs, but all of them allow me to be in and out of my home all day. So weirdly. I am almost always around for breakfast, lunch, and dinner with him. So that to me is a great a bit, that's a great amount of continuity for him where we get to see each other. Now, New York is thumping in a sense, mm -hmm. and I'm anxious to be part of the thump. And so um, I think he's, I, I keep saying, and you know, my show is going back to live with an audience. So I keep saying, daddy's going to work, daddy's going to work. And so we brought him to the clubhouse last week because I wanted him to see what, that there was a place that was work. Right. And uh, he quite enjoyed it. And I forgot that the shelves are basically all toys. Right. And he's like, this, this, he wanted to take it. I'm like, that's taped down. You can't have that. <laughs> it's not a toy. Don't touch Julie Andrews tea bag. Yes, is he was trying there? to get to Julie Andrews tea bag. No, 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 no. Funny that you say that. Yes, that's, uh... Tamara's implant he was trying to get to. <laughs> like, this is not a toy. This is... was in someone. Your parents are a big part of 
your private story, but also your public story, they where are. like they're on the show and the yeah. audience loves them. Yeah. They seem to be thoroughly enjoying this ride that you are on. They are, but the ride that they are most enjoying is the curveball that I threw them at 50 years old of giving them another grandchild. Yeah. Because this was the kid that no one saw coming. Even as the years went on, I would say, you know, I, I still want to have a kid. And my mom would say, it's not happening. Like, really? Oh, okay. You're gonna you're flying to LA for a party right now. When are you gonna have a kid? <laughs> so I proved them all wrong. And it's the great, one of the great joys of having my son is watching his relationship with his grandparents who are um, well into their 80s and who FaceTime with him every night at dinner. Mm. And how lucky, I feel that way too about my parents, that yeah. your son will have a relationship with them. He'll know them. The grandparent-child yes. relationship is so magical. And I remember great times with my grandparents and sleeping over there. Mm -hmm. And they give your kids something that you can't. Uh, and it's just so exciting and sweet. That, that to me has been an incredible uh, side benefit from this entire journey. Our week-long journey across America from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. It's your last one. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year gonna look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Our week-long journey across America, from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. It's your last one. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Our week-long journey across America, from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. It's your last one. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? I've yes. been on Watch What Happens Live over Zoom. Remotely, yes. Remotely a couple of times. Yeah. So what was it like for you to, because we all experience this in one form or another, to do that show over Zoom because so much of that, anyone who's been in that yeah. clubhouse is the crackle of the back and forth. Right. It was weird. Uh, it was highly efficient, which I loved. Yeah. We are doing the show at 1.30 in the afternoon and we will be done at 1.55. And then you can go about your day. So it felt fake for a long time. And I was doing my own makeup to horrible results and really <laughs> not seeming to care for a very long time what I looked like going on television. I didn't monitor my, what I was putting out there. Too much, too little, everything, what was the problem? Yeah. Everything, didn't care. Just was like, once I did the show um, from my, uh, I was doing it from my office for a big chunk of time and had left the Grateful Dead play for the entire show. And they called me after the show and said, we're detecting music. I said, oh, I left the Grateful Dead channel on for the whole show. They're like, we're gonna hope no one notices. And I believe no one noticed. So there was a, I mean, my show is already homemade, yeah. as it were, but it was real. Um, Scotch tape. I think I, I sort of sympathize with that. We all got a little too comfortable with our home yeah. studios. Yes. What we're wearing on the bottom, oh, what we look it. like. I stopped, yeah. Who was wearing anything on the bottom? Not a lot. Yeah, no. What'd you do, shorts and flip flops? Or? I wore, I was barefoot. I wore, yeah. um, I mean, I did it out in the Hamptons for four months and I was in, I, I would jump in the pool and then be in a wet bathing <laughs> suit, 
I'm gonna skip the makeup today. It's fine. Like, I mean, yeah. I was a runaway train. So I was a runaway train. When you're in that studio, you've created such a space. What is the magic of that show to you? Why do you think it's taken off the way it has? I think people respond to the authenticity of the show. I think that God knows I screw up every episode. The audience, maybe, you know, the audience is drinking, the guests are drinking. It's a loose atmosphere. It's Kate Justine! And thank you, Jimmy, for the shots. If we spill a cake on the floor, it's about the cake. We follow the action. And I think people respond to that idea that they don't know what's going to happen. The guests can wind up hating each other. Mm -hmm. We've had guests who literally, you can see them on the air that they hate each other. And the audience then starts, you know, chiming right, in and right. it's fun. You know what else is true about that show? It's a little like Howard Stern where by stepping into that studio, you're agreeing to something. You are submitting to my tomfoolery yeah. and my messiness and you are now going, you are on the witness stand right. about your life. Right. And so, here we are. And the yes. thing that where a publicist on another show would say you can't ask about that right. does not seem to apply on your show. Well, we don't pre-interview our guests, right. which is great. Yeah. So then we can't, <laughs> you know, it's less trouble to get into. But I mean, there are times when people come in and say, listen, yeah. I don't want to talk about the fact that I hate right. X, Y, or Z. But one of the genius moves you have is you can put it off on the audience. So and so, yes. right? Yes. Well, it's true. But yeah. We try. Listen, I don't want anyone to leave unhappy. Yeah. So casting is huge. You often yes. put me on with a housewife. Yes. Right? We like. And it's great. High and low. Yeah. We like um, big and tall, <laughs> small and big. I don't know. You know, we like. Yes. Yeah. It's amazing. It's yeah. such. It's it's the most fun you can have on TV. Getting the audience back was a big deal. And now that the audience back, now that the audience is back and the guests are there, it's what we're supposed yeah. to be doing. Yeah. I'm like, oh, this is why we do it. So I'm very happy to be back. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing. In the City of Angels, two kindly old ladies wanted to help homeless men get off the streets forever. And so they did. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, the new podcast from Dateline and Keith Morrison. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Our week-long journey across America, from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. It's your last one. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Our week-long journey across America, from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. It's your last one. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Speaking Thank of you. fun, let's talk about glitter every day. 365 quotes from women I love. Yes. What's the idea behind it? The idea is just basically in the title, I want to, this is a book that you can look at every day, have a little bit of, little splash of glitter thrown on you every day. I love, women have shaped me for my entire life. From my mom 
to mentors, to the housewives, to divas and icons. And so this is a quote a day by a woman that I love. I love a lot of women and they've said a lot of things. And talk about high and low. We've got Madonna to Malala, Dorinda Medley to Kamala Harris. I mean, it's all over the place. It's funny you say that. I'm gonna jump ahead because I thought this captured you perfectly. On one page, we have a quote from Anne Frank. Yes. As I turn the page, Countess Luann. Thank you. That's Andy Cohen in a nutshell. It absolutely is. Two women that I respect immensely and who have different things to offer the culture, <laughs> but valid nonetheless, <laughs> Willie. This is the world that we live in, by the way. We lead off the book with a quote from the great Evelyn Cohen. My mom. Her quote is, get a hold of yourself, Andy. Yes. What was the context of that? Well, that is a quote that my mom has used over the years that renders me slapped in the face. Get a hold of yourself, Andy. And I will quite <laughs> literally get a hold of myself and come back to earth. It is what, she, it's in her arsenal of, you're a runaway train, you gotta get it together basically. It's a very simple sentiment from Emil, Evelyn Cohen, but one that I respond to. It feels like it's something you've heard for a long time. I have. Yeah. I have. Yeah. She doesn't, she'll, she whips it out uh, when, when she needs it. So Evelyn Cohen's the biggest star in this book. I she think is. we agree. Yes. Some huge names in here. Dolly Parton, Madonna. Um, What's the thrust of the kind of person you want? How, like, how did you put I this just, list together? You know what? It's just women I love. Yeah. Strong, powerful women with something to say. Uh, so that could be anyone that has touched me in my life. I mean, I have a quote from my friend Liza in there that I love that is only go, oh no, when you're a hammer, everything's a nail. Mm. So there are quotes in here to live by and there are quotes in here to laugh by. Yes. And I put a little commentary on every page of my own relationship with the woman, with the women or the quote or um, just some thought I'm having. Yeah, I mean, I, I just love the, I, there's too many to list, but you go from Jack Hay to Jill Biden on the yes, same page, you know? Absolutely. Like that's Jack the beauty. Jack Hay to Jill Biden. That's the beauty. Two of our beacons of inspiration. There you go. Yes. There you go. Yeah. Um, and is it true that Hoda Kotb gave you the idea for this book, or at least she encouraged you to write it? Hodes didn't just give me the idea. I basically just stole the <laughs> idea from her. She had come out with two quote a day books. Yep. And I was, I, I happened to be co-hosting with her during the um, publication of both books, mm -hmm. I believe. So I spent a fair amount of time shilling Hode's books. And I thought to myself, what if I did one of these but put my own spin on it? Um, so then kind of halfway through writing it, I FaceTimed her and said, I need to make sure this is okay <laughs> with you. Like, do you have another one of these coming out? Because I do maybe in the fall, is this okay? She's like, write your book, babe, write your book. There's a couple of great quotes from Hoda in there. Yeah, Hoda's yeah. in the book. Yes, of course she A nice is. tribute, and you mentioned her in the acknowledgments. Yes, well, I mean, again. Central figure. She inspired this book completely. <laughs> Who in this book would you like to have on Watch What Happens Live who you've not yet had on Watch Who what Happens Live? in that book wouldn't I like to have you've on Watch What Happens You've had some of them, Live? a lot of them. Yes, no, I mean, I think, uh, Michelle Obama. Michelle Obama has done every show but mine. Now what's going on with Michelle that? Michelle Obama uh, did The Chew when it was on. I think Michelle Obama has been on CSI. I'm not kidding. Really? I think so, or NCIS or something like that. Truly, <laughs> there almost isn't a show that she hasn't been on except mine. So maybe I should feel good about that. Okay, so Michelle is the big get. She's she's one of them. Who I else mean, is on there? Madonna's never been on. I've she interviewed hasn't been Madonna. On? She's never been in the clubhouse. Oh. Uh, no, she. In the city of angels, two kindly old ladies wanted to help homeless men get off the streets forever. And so they did. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, the new podcast from Dateline and Keith Morrison. 
These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. News is happening now. Look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. Tonight, the major announcement of the COVID vaccine. And this is a significant moment. Your news, whenever it happens, wherever you are, it's here now. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Yeah, so many. Because Madonna is a, a North Star for you, is, is that fair to say? Yes, yeah, she is. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, I love my ladies. So um, let's talk about Housewives. Okay. 15 years. You know what? Can you believe Just that? Just watched season 16 premiere of Orange County. And how do we feel? It's fantastic. Yeah. They got the assignment. Yeah. Let's go back to like 2005 when you're cooking this up. Yeah. You never could have imagined what it was going to become, but what did you well, think it would be back then? Well, in the best, at, when it started, it seemed like a sociological time capsule of this group of women who were kind of nouveau riche in a gated community in Orange County who spoke to their children in a way that none of us had ever seen and were, they were just different. And it was while Desperate Housewives was airing, which right. is how we got the name Real Housewives because these were the real housewives. And it was a play on real because of course, much of them wasn't. Now, season two of the Housewives of Orange County, we found that Gina Keough was getting separated. And that was when I leaned in and said, oh my God, this is now a soap opera. Mm -hmm. This is Knott's Landing. And right. this could go on forever. Did I think I would be sitting with you 16 years later talking about it? Absolutely not. Am I thrilled by it? Yes. They have given me and many others inordinate amounts of pleasure. I would not be here where I am today without them. And that's one of the reasons why I, I thought it was important to include them in this book and why it is a mix of high and low because there are things that they've said that really ring true to me and a lot of other people that I think are worthy of a closer look. And I don't think we can even call it a guilty pleasure anymore. So many it's people not, watch it's a it pleasure. across. It's yes. just a pleasure for yes. a lot of people across the spectrum. Yes. So how has the show, Andy, evolved over the years? So you got Orange County, here comes New York, and right. New Jersey, and you've grown and shown different people and different cultures and different cities. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, it has evolved. We have an, I have another book out on my imprint called Not All Diamonds and Rosé, which is a oral history of the Real Housewives in its entirety. It comes out wow. in like two weeks and it's great. And you see the evolution of it. I think there was an evolution when, I think there was a moment where people started to really realize they were on TV and they could make a moment. And there are right. some moments that were made that were incredible on television that we thought, how authentic is it that this woman is taking her leg off in Le Cirque and throwing it to make a point? Maybe not an incredible finale for season, I think, <laughs> six of New York Housewives, uh -huh. <laughs> but we didn't bring Aviva back the next year because we kind of thought, where do we go from here? Right. You've thrown your leg in Le Cirque. Where does the story take us that we could possibly go? We've been to the so, mountaintop. We've yeah. been to the mountaintop. So, uh, so I think that we try to 
we try to lean into the real and we try to you know go away from the performative but this is a show now all these years later where people know they're on television we're in the middle of two incredible um moments you know beverly hills something happened with erica girardi one of our uh housewives before you know as the cameras were rolling her husband was implicated in a horrible right. crime and so we're watching that unfold now and watching the women relate to that and react to that and you've expanded your audience by the cities you've chosen and the yes. groups of women you've chosen right it's true i mean salt lake city man yeah who would have thought another curveball mormon <laughs> housewives look into it <laughs> uh, people want to know the uh, to the extent you can talk about it behind the scenes i'm sure it must just be your phone is texts and phone calls from various housewives who have an issue with something that was in the show how they were portrayed how do you manage this universe that you've created i think that my senses have been dulled over the years a bit maybe i'm a little more you know i used to look at my dad and think how does he exist amidst the chaos the cacophony of this group of overmodulated loud talkers that <laughs> exists in my nuclear family myself my mother and my sister but you know there's something to be said there's actually a great quote from Ruth Bader Ginsburg in the book uh where she said sometimes we all have to be a little bit deaf and we choose to hear what we want to hear and i thought that was such a great quote because it's like you know you some things matter that you hear some things don't maybe you know some critiques that you get tune it out uh something that someone's yelling about you think you know what they're going to be over it tomorrow i mean i'm not going to take this on right so um rbg so it's a little bit of psychiatrist a little social work a little of that yeah. right just hear them out and yeah let it flush its way through the system yeah there are some moments though where you can't do that and i'm thinking about the reunions yes because you are physically in that room absolutely and sometimes under assault yes that is true um but i control the narrative i mean we're in the midst of um i really had my toughest interview yet with the whole erica girardi uh beverly hills it's unfolding right now unprecedented four part reunion it's happening right now because there were that many questions that needed to be answered by erica Isn't it amazing that you created this universe where it's not just the show itself but there have to be interviews and yes. debriefs there's a news cycle about there the is, shows you've created It's incredible. I opened the New York Post and I am amazed at the amount of coverage yeah. that these women get. It's really dominant. People who don't know you started in journalism Yes. At CBS News. I you were in journalism. You do remain in, yes. as you just described. Yes. But you were a hard news producer I was. working at CBS News. You interned there. You wrote yes. for your school paper at BU. Yeah. <laughs> Are you sometimes do you ever take a minute and say, "Wow, look how my life has turned. I love that part of my life, but look how things worked I out." I do. I think it evolved as TV news evolved. I mean, TV news became a little softer over the years and So I think people started to become more interested in personalities and I think that the definition of what is news has evolved as well. So I walk into a housewives reunion and my attitude is this is news for a lot of people. I mean I got to get answers from these people. Meaningless, of course. But <laughs> it's a form of news nonetheless. <laughs> it truly affects no one's daily life uh and yet as like the facebook hearing is might right uh but uh i i recognize that it is important to people and people want me to do a good job thanks andy thanks willie great to see you happy anniversary <laughs> thank you <laughs>
joining us here. It is time for Popstar Plus, and coming up on today's show, we're celebrating the fresh Prince of Bel Air with the new reboot set to be released after the Super Bowl. We've got an interview with Karen Parsons, who played Hillary on the original, and a great moment from our vaults with the one and only Will Smith himself. But first, let's see what was going on on today's Popstar. First up, breaking news here on Popstart. Hot off the press is the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame announced the lineup of nominees for this year's class. Here are some of the names in the running on the ballot for the very first time. Wow. Yes. One and only American Somebody. treasure, the commander of them all, Dolly Parton. Yes. yes. Finally. Uh, joined by list. Eminem. Yep. Mm -hmm. Savannah, oh, are you listening? Yes. Duran Duran. Yes. My what? Richie, how's yes. that already? Lionel. Yes. Carly Carly Simon, oh, wow. all of them nominated else? once again is music more. and Twitter icon Diane more. Warwick. Yes, yes. She's joined by fellow artist Pat Benatar. Yes. And how is it taking so long for Beck to get in? What is that? Yeah. Every how many kids? There are 17 kids? nominees total oh. this year. Oh, okay. okay. We will find out who gets in oh, when they announce them. Come on. In. Dolly's not in? Well, we're going to find out in May. Wow. Okay. All right, next up. This series looks great on Paramount+. Plus. It's called The Offer. The new series is heading to Paramount+. Plus. Anyway, it's set to tell the dramatic real-life story behind the making of The Godfather. Oh. In the trailer, we get a first look at Miles Teller as award-winning producer Albert S. Ruddy and a peek at his desperate fight to get the Mario Puzo iconic gangster novel onto the big screen. This is a story about family. It's Shakespeare. Agencies won't touch us. It's epic. You want a big producer? Bang, borrow, steal, do whatever it takes. Gangster movies are dead. We will stop out the hatred. If I say I'm gonna handle something, I'm gonna handle it. And the prejudice. It. You're still gonna try to make this thing? Sinatra wants us to shut the picture down. What is our opening line? I believe in America. I mean, it just looks good. Brilliant. Right? Yeah. Brilliant. Watching 1883 on Paramount Plus right now. This is going to come yeah. out. They're doing yeah. some good things over there. Show also stars Ted Lasso's Juno Temple. That's who plays Keeley. Oh, right. She's, uh, she's great in it too. And American Crime Stories. Colin Hanks is in it. It's a great cast. The Offer is the name of it, and starts streaming oh, on April 28th. I give it a good sell there. Yeah. Yeah. Real yeah. Good. Yeah. It was earnest. It was okay. Yeah. I like that. Finally, our Super Bowl commercial kickoff all week. We're giving you a sneak peek at some of the biggest ads for the big game. We used to wait for the big game to see all these yeah. ads. Yeah. Yeah. Now we just yeah. get them here. That's it. Roll this morning we've got a first look at Lay's Potato Chips, their first Super Bowl campaign in 17 years, huh. and it stars the very funny Paul Rudd and Seth Rogen. Here it is. Nervous? Oh, Lay's brings back so many good memories. Remember our road trip in 97? Our first real heart to heart. I've never seen any of your movies. Not even the ones we're in together. Remember when you bought your first house? You ready? Seth, do you? I do. And Janet, do you? That's a yes. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Logan actually created that ad with his oh. longtime friend and writing partner, Evan Goldberg. <laughs> they worked together on Super Bad, and this is the end. Oh. And don't forget to tune in, of course, to The Big Game. It's next Sunday, February 13th. Where else? Right here on NBC. And, of course, streaming on Peacock. Awesome. And that is okay. your pop star today. Love it. Let's get to a few more headlines. After all, the show is called Popstar Plus. First up, and just like that, more good news for fans of the new Sex in the City series after revealing that HBO Max will release a behind-the-scenes documentary following Thursday's season finale. Sarah Jessica Parker is giving hope this may not be the end of the new chapter. SJP telling Variety that she and showrunner Michael Patrick King are already talking about a second season. The actress and executive producer sharing in an interview, there feels like there's momentum. As for, the return of Kim, as for the return of Kim Cattrall's character, the beloved Samantha Jones, don't hold your breath, Parker and King both saying there are no plans to bring her back into the story at this time. But maybe later, who knows? Next up, David Letterman, the man who started it all, returned to Late Night on Tuesday to celebrate the show's 40th anniversary with current host Seth Meyers. And taking a look down memory lane, Dave shared how before he landed in the Late Night time slot, he had a short-lived stint hosting during our current Today Show hours. We had blown up the NBC daytime schedule a year right. previously. I, uh, we had a show, a lot of us had a show that we thought was just great. And it was on for 90 minutes live, like 9 to 1030 on, on NBC. And it replaced two or three uh, game shows. And it, it turned out uh, America didn't want them replaced. <laughs> Certainly didn't want them replaced by me, but when, when you're... Young. Letterman said his daytime show only lasted for a couple of months. A year later, it did land him an 11-year run as the host of Late Night. And those are your headlines up next. Karen Parsons, who played Hillary on the original Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, shares her favorite moments from the show. 
The Sunday Sit Down with Willie Geist podcast. It's the conversations you want to have with the people you'd love to meet. Get your money's worth. Unedited, unfiltered. See ya. Sit down with Willie and listen wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. I believe, I believe. Every dream, every journey, every triumph. And it all starts here. Let the celebration begin. Excitement is in the air. Superhuman. Feel the magic every day. She is a superstar. <laughs> Kayla, we are cheering <laughs> you on. Right. And share every moment with us at the Winter Olympics. Today. 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 Today is where the games begin. Top story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. In the city of angels, two kindly old ladies wanted to help homeless men get off the streets forever. And so they did. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, the new podcast from Dateline and Keith Morrison. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Welcome back to Popstar Plus. In just 11 days, Peacock, of course, part of our parent company, NBC Universal, is going to be releasing the highly anticipated Bel Air. So today we thought we'd take a moment to check out, well, the roots of that reboot. We're going to get a visit from Karen Parsons, who played Hillary on the original show. Here is today's flashback. I think I probably hear the line, Daddy, can I have $300 more than anything? Dad, I need $300. <laughs> How would I describe Hillary Banks? You know, it's, the way I've described her has changed over the years. I still think she's incredibly self-centered um, and she's just myopic. You know, she's she's been grown up as Daddy's little girl, first child and it was a girl you know i just imagine that they dressed her up in all kinds of little fancy little frilly things and everything she wanted they you know they gave her and i have a, my first child was a daughter so i'm starting to even understand it in that regard i think i underestimated a lot of things about her i think she's she's very determined she's so self-centered and seemingly myopic but at the same time she's so she she's very focused and determined and has confidence you know, the, the confidence we all wish we had. Com if she wants to do something, she knows she can do it. She's going to do it because that's what she wants. And that's it. And she's going to get it because she always gets what she wants. You know, so it, it, nothing stops her. And I think that's a quality of Hillary's that I love and I wish I could have a little bit more of. Um, and I do think that she has a lot more heart. You know, she has a lot more heart than she might always get credit for. <laughs> Look, th there he goes. <laughs> The, the bungee jumping episode will forever be my bittersweet um, episode because I remember when I read the script for the first time, there was this horrible heartbreak of, oh my gosh, Brian Stokes Mitchell's not going to be on the show anymore. Because Brian, who played Trevor, was so wonderful. I loved working with him. I loved the Hillary Trevor romance. <laughs> it was really fun. And so it was horribly disappointing to read like, oh no, you know, it, Trevor's gone, Brian's gone. And then you just see the way it all, how it happened and how it played out. And then of course, that's the, the, the laugh, the part that was so funny. Yes. Yes, what? Yes, your highness. <laughs> I think my favorite episode still for me to do and I liked it how it came out too was in the first season when Hillary drops out of college and is blackmailed by both Will and Carlton you know and when I go to my brother for help um, I'll never forget when we taped that episode and it was the first season and so I didn't know a lot of how the audience was taking Hillary. You know, I hadn't had a lot of feedback from people yet that I was assuming people probably weren't going to like her that much because everyone loved Will and she had this kind of thing with him. And uh, we got to the part where I go to Carlton for help 
and say he's making me, you know, clean his dirty draws or lucky draws or whatever. And he says, will you clean mine? Is he making you clean his room? No. Will you clean mine? <laughs> and when that happened, he turned on me. The audience did not just start clapping. They started stomping in the stands. They started stomping their feet and howling and we we're trying to keep a straight face and stay in the scene. And if you see, watch the scene, you can see as they cut back and forth, you can see me kind of smiling and trying to play it off as a, I can't believe you smile <laughs> because I couldn't keep it down. I couldn't believe they hated her so much. They were loving seeing her get hers. I'd like to finish my story if that's okay with you, Hillary. <laughs> it was fun, the whole thing, barking like a dog at the table and how we choreographed, put that whole thing together was um was really fun you know i was really lucky to, to get a lot of really funny lines and i forgot how funny they were until like you know recently when i found them as memes and stuff <laughs> one i totally forgot about from the first season that i saw as a meme was um good god who shot the couch good god who shot the couch <laughs> There are so many good ones, like, how do I put this nicely? I'm just too good for you. As long as neither of us are doing anything, why don't we not do it together? Oh, well, that's very sweet, but how can I put this nicely? I'm too good for you. <laughs> you know, there are these just lines that were just, um, her just being honest in her own Hillary way. <laughs> Will! Hill! <laughs> Daddy, I need $500. Like what you see on The Fresh Prince is Will. That is Will, more than any other film you'll see. I remember I saw Shark's Tale, the animated film that he did. And I was telling him, I said, I, was, I saw Shark's Tale and it reminded me, it just made me feel like I was with you so much, like more than anything else I've seen. He said, because in that film, he said, the only other thing besides Shark's Tale where they let me do whatever I wanted was Fresh Prince, just being myself and do what I wanted. So it was like, if he's playing a fish or if he's a will on the will on the first print. That's like, that's really him. Just this big personality, loves to laugh, loves to, is so curious and so intensely bright. You know, he's always, you can see it when you watch him. I mean, I watch, if I watch an interview or on something, I still see that laser focused look because his mind is going and all the, everything's like churning and he's, he's always finding excitement in things. And we've got more with Karen in just a moment, including her favorite Fresh Prince guest stars. That's coming up. In the city of angels, two kindly old ladies wanted to help homeless men get off the streets forever. And so they did. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, the new podcast from Dateline and Keith Morrison. News is happening now. Look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. Tonight, the major announcement of the COVID vaccine. And this is a significant moment. Your news, whenever it happens, wherever you are, it's here now. The Sunday Sit Down with Willie Geist podcast. It's the conversations you want to have with the people you'd love to meet. Get your money's worth. Unedited, unfiltered. See ya. Sit down with Willie and listen wherever you get your podcasts. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it, I know that it can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at five on NBC News Now. We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year gonna look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's meet the press. 
And we're back. Karen Parsons starred as Will's cousin Hillary on the original Fresh Prince of Bel Air for six seasons. Here's more now of our conversation about the beloved sitcom. We had so many great guest stars. Um, Zsa Zsa Gabor let me wear her ring all day. That was cool. Um, so I like, she gets points for that. You know, I love that we had Milton Burl on the show, but I never interacted with him. He was apparently real, a real curmudgeon. Um, I love uh, Tom Jones is probably one of my very favorites. I was really excited that Tom Jones was on the show. Um, but my very favorite person to act with hands down was Regis Philbin. All these people on the show, but I will tell you, Regis Philbin, we were talk show hosts. I was co-hosting with the guest hosting with him. And, um, and he's so dry. He was so funny. His timing was incredible. And it was just a real fun game, you know, tossing it back and forth. I would have loved to work with him regularly. You spend more on clothes than most small countries spend on grain. <laughs> I feel like I learned a lot from James as a person and as an actor. That's hard because it's, I feel like it's so much in me and he was so generous. You know, I'll never get over the episode that sticks with so many people that Will, when Will's father left. How come he don't want me, man? And I remember Will really wanted that to work and, and him going to James and talking to him and, and giving him advice on things and being really helpful in a really quiet way, in a very quiet way. He was not heavy handed about anything like that. Um, but one thing James did that was really beautiful is he he saw things in you that you might not see in yourself and he saw possibilities. He used to really want me to play Lady Macbeth. It made me look at myself differently. It made me look at myself as an actor differently. It, it made you feel, it was nice to be seen, but it was also interesting to, to recognize someone seeing you through a, a very different lens than maybe you saw yourself and credit yourself. And he did that not just with me, you know, with Tatiana, um, he had the same thing about some, something he wanted her to do that he really saw. And I think it, it landed on her or she saw that for herself. And he was just, he was beautiful that way that he would look at you and say, you know, it's like what you're capable of, you know what you could do, something so different from how you might see yourself. And, um, and it made you kind of expand. Yeah, he was, he was amazing. You know, one of my favorite things about the relationship between the siblings, the whole family, and really just the whole makeup of the, of the family and the cast, including Jeffrey, was how different we all were. We were all from such different personalities. I don't think anybody was like another person in this, this whole cast of characters. And that was really a wonderful thing, especially for a black family on screen. Like whenever I see scenes with Hillary and Ashley, it's like oil and water in a way. Not in a, not in a that they don't that they don't like each other, but that they they're just so different, you know. And Ashley's so kind to her sister, who she feels she's a big sister, but she kind of feels for her because it's almost like somebody dropped Hillary on her head. <laughs> so I kind of the way Ashley speaks to her a little bit, you know, recognizing that she's different and um and i love that you know hillary still feels like whatever she's saying is right and that's just the way the world is i think if, i think hillary now would be the queen of the internet i i have no no doubt she'd be the instagram queen to me that's so obvious i remember once i thought of it once and i was like oh yeah that's where she lives you know and that's what she was made for <laughs> she would own it <laughs> she would own instagram and coming up, Will Smith's visit today in a very 90s getup as Fresh Prince was at its peak. That's coming up in The Vault next. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon. And by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. News is happening now. Look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. 
tonight, the major announcement of the COVID vaccine. And this is a significant moment. Your news, whenever it happens, wherever you are, it's here now. I believe, I believe. Every dream, journey, and triumph. And it all starts here. United States, let's go! Feel the magic every day. The excitement is in the air. At the Winter Olympics, today is where the games begin. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Welcome back. The year was 1991, and the Fresh Prince of Bel Air was all the rage when Will Smith visited today to chat about his role and the show's success. Take a look. Tonight's airing of the NBC comedy Fresh Prince of Bel Air is going to feature back to back segments. And the two segments will be bridged by the premiere of the Prince's newest music video. Will Smith is the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. How you been? Good morning. All right, man. How you doing? I'm all right. First off, why two segments, two episodes in one night? Uh, well, what it is is NBC has been juggling things to, to put behind the show, trying to see what works and, and what happens. Like last week, they had the Cosby Show at 8 and Fresh Prince of Bel-Air at 8.30, just trying to see what happens in the slot. So oh. this, is, this is just something else. Experiment. Just to, yeah, experiment. I saw, I saw recently where you said that you weren't embarrassed, but that you thought the first few episodes of Fresh Prince, your acting was terrible. Is that oh, true? Oh, yes, very much so. I got, I got to around the sixth or the seventh episode, and I was totally new to acting. I had, you know, no formal theatrical training, and this is the, this is the first thing I've, I ever did was the pilot of the show. So, you know, I'm, I'm just giving it my best shot. And then what happens, I'm looking back, and as I'm hanging with actors and things like that, you start to see the different tricks and everything that they do. And I looked at myself and it was like, oh. And if you watch the first three episodes, next time they play, I'm lipping everyone's lines. Because I memorized the whole script. I didn't just memorize my lines. So it's like, as you're talking, I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> waiting for your Yeah, yeah you know, waiting for, for my next line. <laughs> so it's, uh, it was like, ooh. If I add lib, I lose you, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm gone. As you watch today, do you, I mean, do you feel totally comfortable with being an actor yet? I'm starting to feel more comfortable. It's just, it's just so many things to learn. And what, like, I, I like Denzel a lot, and and I study people. And it's like, when they wipe their head or something like that, that's planned. Uh -huh. You know, every everything they plan, everything. It's like there's hours and hours of preparation that that go into playing their parts, but. I, I never prepare. I learn my lines and show up <laughs> and do it. You and I last had a chance to talk back in September uh -huh. um, when, when the show was just about to debut. And, and, and back then, everybody was saying, oh, this is going to be the big mega uh -huh. blockbuster of all uh -huh. time. The show, the show did well. Uh -huh. Finished 38th, but it wasn't the, the mega hit that uh -huh. other people expected. Did they expect too much? Were the expectations unrealistic? Um, well, again, I, I was blind going in, so I just, I knew that, you know, that everyone was hyping it up and he's gonna be the next this and next that. I was like, oh, please, just let me get one episode behind me. Let me, just let me do one first. So it's like, I, I pretty much had to get away from that, not pay attention to what was going on too much. Um, for me, the whole year was a learning process. Yeah. So uh, as I learned and everything, so now I can have something to do with what the hype is going to be next year. Nice. So, you know, it's, I, I was blind. It was like, hey, they, this is their job. I got mine. Well, let's show a clip of that learning process. This Absolutely. is from tonight's episode when you're um, asking Jeff to go on out with your sister. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Jazz. Um, <laughs> look, you know I'd do anything for you. You're like a brother to me. Check. Which means that your sister should be like a sister to me, not a girlfriend. I mean, just think, if it doesn't work out, it could jeopardize our friendship. I'm willing to take that risk. <laughs> yeah, my brother, I'm gonna have to get us some serious, serious thought. All right, well, can I bring it by just to meet you sometime? Yeah, that's chill. Cool. Tonight, 8 o'clock sharp, and try and smell good. <laughs> Yo, big boy, give your sweet mama some sugar. <laughs> All right, let's talk music. Now, you're putting the video between the two between segments. The two Aren't shows. they really different audiences? I mean, the, the audience for your music and the audience for your TV show? Uh, I don't think so. I think that, that my music audience is a big chunk of the television audience. I think there's a, there's a few new viewers that, that haven't heard Parents Just Don't Understand or Mike yeah. Tyson or Nightmare or any of my other records. Um, 
<clears throat> I think that the character is pretty much the same. It's all me. What I'm giving on the television show is just myself, and what I give in the music is just myself. For those who may not know, before you, you were on television, you, you were a recording artist, yes. along with DJ Jazzy Jeff. But, but the TV show has made it difficult for you to keep up with your music, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, very, very much so. Um, it took us a year to do our album, and our album is finally finished, but it took us a year to do it, because we, we were trying to do, I'm in Los Angeles, and Jeff is in Philadelphia, so he has sort of a fax thing going with this album, you know, going back and forth and back and forth. But it worked out, turned out good. The album's real good. You figure you're going to have to choose between music and acting? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, what, what I can do now is we, we have a pretty long hiatus in, in, from the acting world. So during the summer, I can work on my albums. Nice. The summertime. We'll take care of yourself, will you? <laughs> you too. Always fun to take a trip down memory lane. Don't forget the reboot, Bel Air premieres Super Bowl Sunday. You know it's good when it premieres there. February 13th on Peacock. Check out this next conversation right here on Popstar Plus. Okay, I love this quoted by series, but not as much as I love this guy, Pat Monahan. Pat is the, as you guys know, he's the lead singer of Train. He's one of my favorite guys. And Pat, I mean, your music's so soulful, it always hits me at a spot where I just go like, ouch, I can't, I just, it's special. So I wondered, is there a quote that you have that you feel like is kind of a little bit of a guiding light for you? There is. It's it's one that I didn't give you guys. I'm going to tell you the one that I that I gave you. But uh, I've been looking for the one that really did influence me. I, I used to have to go to my uncle's uh, CPA firm, and he had in like old English this uh, saying that said, good things cometh to those who wait as long as those who waiteth worketh their ass off. <laughs> and I couldn't find it. Uh, so the closest one that I could find was this by Thomas Edison, which is opportunity is missed by most people because it's dressed in overalls and looks like work. And that made a lot of sense to me because, uh, you know, especially young people are there like, oh, I want to be famous. I want to I want to be a TikTok star, which is awesome because it's such a cool opportunity. But it takes a lot to, to do those things. And that's uh, that's why I love this quote. So do you think that you're where you are today because of hard work or because of talent? Which wins if you're weighing the two? Well, I had to have a little bit of talent, but it was the hard work that really did it. Because I realized early on that I wasn't as talented as Kurt Cobain and so many other very talented people. And it didn't probably come easy to them either, but it sure seemed like it did. So I just had to outwork everybody. And honestly, I still feel like I have to. So Boy. even being in the music industry for 30 years, I hope to have 30 more, but it won't come for free, you know? Wow. Well, I think that's good for a lot of folks who are watching and wondering, like, I wonder if but I can you're the hardest. Them. You're the hardest working human <laughs> being, in, you know, in the world. All right. Hey, Pat, thank you, honey. I appreciate you. Thanks, Soda. And that does it for this edition of Popstar Plus. Be sure and join us again tomorrow. We're going to be catching up with snowboarding star Chloe Kim as the Winter Olympics gets underway. We'll see you then. Welcome to Today All Day. All Day? Today All Day. All Day. This is a long oh, way of man. asking yeah, who's your okay. favorite character you've ever oh, played? The right. unicorn. The unicorn. you got to have the unicorn. <laughs> what is she right there? That's why you're saying all these nice things? Yeah, she gave me the, the look. Sorry to disturb your day. Everyone's mad at you, Willie. Better make this fast. I don't want the wrath of Luna. When I see you, I always think, I wonder what his quote would be. Give us six minutes and we'll ask as many questions as we can. Welcome to Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Hi, buddy Cal. Cooking with me. Dad's no babysit. It's called parenting. What was the first book you remember loving? Heart Smart Today. With simple exercises to strengthen your heart. Make the most of your beach days. It's all about the tracksuit oh, now. How wow. good do they look? I now pronounce you husband and wife. Kiss the bride. This morning, a story of people helping people. You've received tons of letters from people who have been inspired. Let's do the weather out. <laughs> OK. All you got to do is say, it's cold, it's warm, it's raining, it's snowing. That's it. One of our most favorite yes. franchises ever, wow. Ambush Makeovers. Okay. Look at it. It doesn't, it doesn't look, look so good. No, it doesn't look good. Will you judge us in a cook-off? I yeah. will, and okay. you guys will definitely win something. Today, all day. All day? All day. Welcome to Today, All Day. Well, well, 
Well, well. Hello to all of you today, all day watchers. We're so happy that you're joining us for Today in 30. It wasn't the same without you yesterday. I missed you guys. I missed you too. I missed Today in 30 Nation. Um, today's show, we've got two big interviews we've really been looking forward to sharing with you. we got to start with the weather, yeah. though. It's yeah. nasty out there. It's causing a lot of problems from New Mexico all the way to New England. Thousands of flights canceled from coast to coast. Yeah, and more are expected. So Al's going to bring us the latest. Then uh, we have an emotional conversation with Candace Cameron Bure. She played Bob Saget's daughter on Full House. This is the first time, by the way, she's opened up since his passing. She had some real sweet things to say about your 35 year friendship. It was a lovely mm. friendship. Mm -hmm. And then, doesn't get much bigger than this. Jennifer Lopez, mm -hmm. J Lo. What? One half of Benefer. Joined us <laughs> live in Studio 1A. We chat about her new movie, her family. And yeah, we talked about that. that. How could we not? We had to. It's I have a hundred chance. million questions. We can't. Okay, yes, a lot more. Let's get loud. Let's get the show started. <laughs> it's time for Today, Today in 30. 30. Let's get things started with NBC's Shaquille Brewster. He's in snowy Detroit. Hey, Shaq, good morning. Good morning. Well, we saw rain and snow here in Detroit for well over 24 hours, though it did fall short of those record amounts that were originally feared. Now come those frigid temperatures, not just here as the Midwest digs out, but also in the south, where the concern this morning is the ice. Overnight, a dangerous deep freeze slamming the south. Treacherous ice coating trees and roadways in Texas. Plummeting temperatures with wind chills that feel like 20 below are impacting parts of the state, not used to such extreme cold. More than 40,000 Texans are waking up without power this morning. The dangerous conditions renewing fears of last year's catastrophic power grid failure that left millions in the dark and hundreds dead. The massive winter storm has already dumped a foot of snow across parts of the Midwest. In Detroit, a difficult cleanup. This is the wet heavy stuff? Yes. Are you ready for it? No. <laughs> You're not ready for no. it at all. Cars frozen over in Oklahoma. The governor deploying the National Guard, just one of multiple states taking emergency measures. This is something that is rarely done, uh, but uh, the predictions about this storm are, again, severe, and we want to be ready. The same system responsible for burying neighborhoods near Chicago. It's dangerous to walk out here. Jackknifing tractor trailers in Champaign, Illinois, and leaving cars slipping, sliding, and just plain stuck on highways nationwide. The storm already grounding more than 3,500 flights today, adding to the nearly 6,000 canceled or delayed on Wednesday. And it's not just those travel delays. FedEx already announcing shipping delays nationwide. And we saw Walmart close dozens of stores across the country. All the effect of this massive and slow moving storm that's now making its way east. Yeah. Guys. All right, Shaq, thank you so much. It's going to be a tricky day mm -hmm. out there. For more on where the storm is, where it's headed, Al, good morning to you. Good morning, guys. A lot of facets to this thing. We're basically looking at all this moisture coming up from the Gulf and the Atlantic. Extreme cold coming down from the this system from the north, an ice storm along this front, and that's going to be the big problem. It stretches for 2,200 miles, and in fact, we want to focus right now on the number of folks. 108 million of us under winter weather advisory, storm warnings, watches. You can see we've got an icy mix down to the south, snow stretching all the way back into New England, but let's focus right now on Texas. Right now, temperatures well below freezing. You can see the ice rain snow line there, and the problem is going to be the real strain on the power infrastructure. We're going to be watching that closely. Dallas, a wintry mix turns to all snow. After 2 p.m., one to two inches of snow. We move a little further to the east. Memphis, freezing rain and sleet throughout tonight, on into tonight. Ice totals about a half an inch. That can cause big problems. St. Louis, heavy snow ends after two. They could pick up an additional three to five inches of snow. And as we continue east to Cleveland, heavy snow, a storm total of eight to 12 inches. Power impacts will be massive all along this icy front of up to a three quarters of an inch of ice snowfall amounts little rock one inch columbus four to eight inches cleveland could pick up another 12 inches of snow same for burlington boston just one plus to the south of this severe weather today possible wind gust damaging hail tornadoes can't be ruled out and heavy rain we've got 13 million people under flash flood watches and upwards of five inches of rain from new orleans all the way up into the Appalachian. So we're going to be watching a very mixed bag today, guys. All right, Al, thank you so much. 
Stick around because there's much more coming up on Today in 30. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. In the city of angels, two kindly old ladies wanted to help homeless men get off the streets forever. And so they did. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, the new podcast from Dateline and Keith Morrison. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. I believe, I believe. Every dream, journey, and triumph. And it all starts here. United States, let's go! Feel the magic every day. The excitement is in the air. At the Winter Olympics, today is where the games begin. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. We are back now with a touching new tribute to Bob Saget. Yeah, it's been less than a month since the beloved actor and comedian's sudden passing. And now for the first time, we're hearing from his TV daughter and also his dear friend of 35 years. Yeah, I had a chance to sit down for a candid and emotional conversation with Candace Cameron Bure. She played one of Bob's daughters on Full House. Now, through the years, they remained very close friends. And now she wants to share that with the world, the Bob Saget she knew and loved. You know, Candace, it's so hard to believe that you first met Bob Saget back when you were 10 years old. You're 45 now. It's been 35 years of knowing and loving Bob Saget. Do you remember the very first time you met him? I do. We were doing our pilot episode for Full House, and Bob is so tall. You know, he's 6'4", and I was 10 years old. But he kneeled down to me and got eye to eye with me and he said hi I'm Bob and I'm gonna be your dad I'm playing your dad so I want you to feel comfortable and we're gonna be friends and um he was just so warm and inviting and it really kicked off an incredible 35 year friendship well for you as a young actress to be able to be yourself you have to be able to share like what's on your mind what's on your heart Mm -hmm. Was he a place that you could go to do that? He was. It's one of the things that made Bob so special. He was so emotionally available all the time. And he was really the first person in my life as a man that I saw um, cry and, and have those emotions right at the forefront of his conversations. If you were hurting, he would hurt with you. You would see the tears well up in his eyes. Bob is a remarkable person and I've never had a friendship like the one I've had with him. And that's what, why it makes it so hard. You said Bob is a remarkable person. You talk about him like he's here still. I can't believe he's gone forever. I just can't. I, my, my brain has not comprehended that yet. You know, I think for, for even TV viewers, again, you might think like, oh, he, he played your dad on TV, but Bob was so much more than that. I mean, really one of my closest friends for 35 years. So to, to think that um, he's not here and we're not going to have another joke or another hug or just another bit of ridiculousness in life is, is um, uh, it's almost unbearable for me to think about. You know, it's funny because I don't think I've seen this in my lifetime with someone in Hollywood that is so universally loved and cared for. He was all that, wasn't he? He really was all that. He would drop anything for anyone. And he just had a heart of gold. Mm -hmm. And on top of it, he made you laugh. Like he was just, it was the best combination of all different traits that you could imagine. 
together. And that was Bob. Was he proud of your career? <laughs> Bob was so proud of my career. He really was. He was a big cheerleader for me. He was so incredibly supportive. Candace's deep faith is an important part of her life, and she'll be the first to say that not everyone understands that, but Bob did. You know, if people see Bob stand up, it's not family friendly stand up. So that would always be a question like, how, how can you guys be friends? And it's like, well, I grew up with Bob, so I understand his sense of humor. I too have a sense of humor, <laughs> but I can also separate that person that's on the stage making jokes to get the laugh and the real heart behind a person and their love and their friendship and their kindness. He would invite me to things all the time in the stand-up world, but then say, you're invited, but don't come. <laughs> don't come because I know you, this will like cross a line for you. You're not going to enjoy it. You're not going to laugh. So like, I love you. You can come if you want to, but don't come. You know, you remember the first time you met him. And I wonder what was the last communication you had with him? It was just a few, just two weeks before he passed. I'm actually going to grab my, my phone. I'm so scared that I'm going to pull up his text and then accidentally delete it one day. Like it scares me so much because I don't ever want to lose this. We were going to have dinner and we got into a little tiff and his flight was delayed. We ended up not having dinner, but in, in Bob fashion, the next day he wrote me like what would be pages long of a text he was apologizing, saying he was cranky and he was just so, he was just so sorry. He said, oh, now I feel even worse. I was so wrong. You're like my favorite person on the earth. And I acted like Dolly. I was getting ready to take a late flight and I was annoyed. Dolly was his mom. And he said, you're one of the few that understands that if I act like Dolly, I'm not the best at my game that day. Ha ha. And Bob went on and on and on in the text. And he said at the end, I love you more for the trouble you're giving me, if that's even possible. And I wrote back, I love you. I could never be mad at you. Roll my eyes at you? Yes, but never mad. And I love that you being Dolly, that made me laugh out loud. I loved your mom. And he just wrote back, I loved you. My mom loved you too. What did you lose when he passed? Bob was available and there for everyone that he knew. But Bob, Bob was that person that no matter what happened, Bob would drop anything for you in a second, in a heartbeat. And you didn't even have to be his best friend for him to do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's how huge his heart was. There are very few friends in life like that. And that is the hardest part of the loss is just that, that friendship that's unconditional, that mm. it's mm. a lifetime, but I guess our lifetime is, you know, finished on earth <laughs> for now. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> she also um, had this sweatshirt on and it said, love like Jesus, hug like Bob Saget. <laughs> and she was wearing it herself. And she ended up um, kind of marketing it and giving all the proceeds to Scleroderma because oh. their love oh. was real and you can see it. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. The Sunday Sit Down with Willie Geist podcast. It's the conversations you want to have with the people you'd love to meet. Get your money's worth. Unedited, unfiltered. See ya. Sit down with Willie and listen wherever you get your podcasts. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. News is happening now. 
look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. Tonight, the major announcement of the COVID vaccine. And this is a significant moment. Your news, whenever it happens, wherever you are, it's here now. In the city of angels, two kindly old ladies wanted to help homeless men get off the streets forever. And so they did. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, the new podcast from Dateline and Keith Morrison. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. That's the song. Oh. That's the song. And we're back. Oh. Jennifer Lopez singing On My Way from the soundtrack of her upcoming movie, Marry Me. Also one of your absolute favorite songs. By the way, that song applies to all kinds of love, Jennifer. All I'm just telling you. Love, love with a man, love with kids. It's we are also about mistakes, right? Like making mistakes and then like realizing they weren't mistakes. They yeah. were just your journey to yeah. where I was you just needed passing, to go. You know where I was? I was just passing through. I was just passing on through. On my way, way to you. you. You got a you got a new movie out. You yeah. got a great life. You're sitting here and you're you're starting yes. the promotional tour. And yes. this is this movie really is about life lessons, isn't it? It is. It's it's uh, about you know I I play a, a pop superstar. <laughs> Owen plays a math teacher, and the <laughs> two of us kind of find each other, and really figure out like what life in love is about. And it's mm -hmm. a really sweet movie. And I, and I did an album to go with it. So it was a first time for me, mm -hmm. kind of doing a romantic comedy with a whole mm -hmm. album. And it was a lot of fun. It was a good, good, mm. good time. You get to sing in this. I mean, cause I when do. you played Selena, they used her voice. Right. This is my first album with the movie. So That's how, cool. was, it, was it weird singing in a movie for you? No, I loved it. It's <laughs> like a dream come true. It's, what, <laughs> it's my final, my two worlds coming together. <laughs> Well, the movie is, um, I, I've seen the movie, obviously, and love the movie. It's a lot of fun. But I do think it's about, like, mistakes and correcting them. And I think a lot of times, and people take real life lessons from this, this kind of thing. It's about, you say to yourself, I am not going to settle for that. That's not enough for That's, me. I know. You actually do a little cameo in the movie, and it's about that moment in the movie yeah. where she, they're talking about the fact that this relationship, uh, I play Cat Bash, mm -hmm. uh, Cat, mm -hmm. and Bastion is played by Maluma, mm -hmm. and uh, their whole thing goes south. They were going to do this big wedding uh, mm -hmm. in front of everybody, and, and and she makes this huge mistake in front of the whole world mm -hmm. and has to kind of figure out what to do next and damage control the whole thing. Right. And it becomes a, a whole crazy thing. But well, yeah, a lot of folks are mistakes. saying, like, that's, wait a minute, this sounds familiar. You know, it's uh -huh. like Jennifer Lopez is a huge superstar. Yes. What it's like to have to live your life out it in the very, public this eye. This movie was very meta for I was going to say it is meta. Absolutely. <laughs> meta pun This meta. is the first time that I got to really take my own life, because I've played a lot of different types of characters in all these different movies over the years. But this was the first time that it was as close to me, mm -hmm. um, and I was able to kind of really bring special little nuances. Like, I know what it feels like to go home and have them, like, making jokes about you on TV. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Does that when feel you're vulnerable? you're starting to know what that is, too, a little bit. You know, yeah. you guys yeah. are, like, in the spotlight yeah. as well. Yeah. But it's hard, you know? And I was like, you know, you go home sometimes and you cry when it was a mm. big heartbreak or something happened and it was bad, and it's hard to deal with. And it's like people, you know, I don't think they get to see that as much. You have to put your best foot forward. Mm -hmm. You have to come out here. You have to do the smile. You have to do the thing. That's part of your job. But there's a person there. And, I, and it was nice to kind of let that side mm -hmm. out because I never get to do that, really. Some people in real life, when they've gone through heartbreak publicly, yeah. decide, you know what, I'm not sure that it's so worth it to jump back in the pool. Oh, and yeah. just in real life, yeah. you jump back in the pool. You knew what was going to, you knew that there were going to be people, people speculating. You never, yeah, you don't know with, yeah. with life. You just have to 
do what feels right to you. You yeah. have to kind of follow your heart. We were talking off the air about yeah. being honest with yourself. Like you yeah. have to be honest. Like, is this right for me? Is this not? Um, do I want to move on from this? Do I not? Like you, you, those are big decisions. And you, you know, when you're in the public eye, yes, people are looking at those decisions. But at the end of the day, you have to do what feels right in your own heart. I feel like we're talking around it. It's like uh, people want to know because obviously there are a lot of parallels yeah. and you're back together with Ben Affleck and yes. a lot of people <laughs> were rooting for that relationship mm -hmm. back then. And then, well, I mean, right? <laughs> well, Damon. I was, I liked, I was yeah. pro Benefer. <laughs> and by the way, Matt Damon, we had him on. He yeah, was he, was, he was cheering, he was yes, cheering you guys all on. really, really gave him our dime. No, we, yes, said, we, just, we, we just said, we just where it do we so stand I on this? I felt so bad for him. I was like, oh, my God. I know thing. this is like, you don't want to necessarily like spill your guts about something that's personal and it belongs to you. But I yeah. do have to say, I wondered like how that, after all those years, you mm -hmm. know, I mean, I think so many people can relate to like, oh, the one that got away or yeah. the one you always wondered yeah. about or what if, like, how did you find each other again i think you know we can talk about that backstage if you really want to know <laughs> um but you know i think what we learned from the last time is that uh, love when you are lucky enough to find it is so sacred and special and you have to hold a little bit of that privately mm -hmm. and uh and and that's what we've learned but we're very happy if that's what you're wondering yeah. about. Thank well, you. i love also how you said to your kids love is not always a straight line no. sometimes you think you know, wait a minute, that ended, so that's that. But yeah. love does funny things. Yeah, and I think, you know, again, it's it's like the song, life is a journey, and you're going through all of these things, and you think, oh, God, I just messed that up. I made mm -hmm. that huge mistake. This, Why did I do this? Why did I do that? And then all of a sudden, one day, it all kind of makes sense. Yeah. You're like, oh. Mm. We've all ruined oh, our lives 10 oh, times. I, I kept on the road, and I kept trying to do the right things, and. And it kind of paid off. By the way, you're you're saying your own song. Wait, hold on. <laughs> I'm singing my. Well, Wait. you know, you kind of make music that means something to you. But this is it. it it's is. like I've always. Of course. Wait. I was on my way to you. Yes. I mean, that's magic. I know. I, I love this. this is yes. every heartbreaks a yellow brick road. Do you want me to say it? Taking me home. Wait. I was just passing through. Just the end. Yeah. I was on my way to you. That's a good song. <laughs> but that's life. That's your life. That's it our is. lives. That's it that's is. all of our lives. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I think that's what. I think that's what people will like about the movie and the songs. All of the songs were written specifically for the film, and they are about that journey to true love and mm. finding your real home. By the I way, love I love a rom com, by the way, don't yeah, you? Me too. And I'd rather be someone who believes in true love than someone who doesn't. Oh and my I God, think there that's are, what life is all yeah, about. And you love do. Love and happiness. Inside. Yeah. And trying to find that. And, but being, it, it, yeah. I think that it all starts with being good with yourself. Like, mm -hmm loving yourself and making sure that you're good on your own no matter what and then you can have a really healthy relationship with somebody by the way you, that's a journey you too. look beautiful on people let Thank me just you. block out this corner you look really you look <laughs> why are you trying to block out the corner you don't want to talk about your personal stuff is that what it is hold up <laughs> touche 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 all right they call that mutually assured destruction <laughs> Girl, you'll come back on the fourth hour, but we oh, and course. with Maluma too. We're gonna have yes, some fun. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. You guys are gonna be together, and you can yes. see "Marry Me." It's in theater, streaming on Peacock next Friday, February 11th. That was funny. You're funny. Thank okay. you. <laughs> you're funny. You're funny. You're, fun. yeah. you're, funny. you're gonna okay. get me afterwards. Yeah. Okay. The Sunday Sit Down with Willie Geist podcast. It's the conversations you want to have with the people you'd love to meet. Get your money's worth. Unedited, unfiltered. See ya. Sit down with Willie and listen wherever you get your podcasts. I believe, I believe. Every dream, journey, and triumph. And it all starts here. United States, let's go. Feel the magic every day. The excitement is in the air. At the Winter Olympics, today is where the games begin. Our week-long journey across America, from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. Is your last movie. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now.
What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Oh, we're feeling the Olympic spirit this morning, folks. On the eve of the opening ceremony, some competitions already underway in Beijing. And the return of the Olympics also means the return of our pal, NBC News national political correspondent, Steve Kornacki. You'll be seeing a lot of Steve Kornacki over the next two weeks. He'll be breaking down the stats, breaking down the action, helping us understand some of the more obscure rules associated with some of, the, some of these sports. So uh, help us break this down, Steve. Let's start here. What are some of the numbers uh, that, that we should know going into Beijing? Hey, good morning to everybody. Happy Olympics season, winter Olympic season. I always like the cold weather sports personally. Well, take a look. There are 15 sports, first of all, at these winter games. And that's less than you'd have at a Summer Olympics. I think there were 33 sports actually at the Summer Olympics. So there are 15 sports here at the Winter Olympics, although there are 109 events within those sports. That's actually up from 102 events at the last Winter Olympics. Basically what's happened is they've added a number of mixed events that are new this time around. They have also added Added an event. I'm really curious about this one called the Mono Bob. And what is that? It's a female only event. It's the bobsled, one person bobsled. Wow. One woman in the bobsled. So I'm really curious what that's going to look like. One of the new events at these games. By the way, more than 40% of the athletes on Team USA here in Beijing in 2022 are returning oh, oh. from Pyeongchang in 2018. So maybe there'll be a bit of a leg up there for the U.S. And then how about this one? This is the official Olympic mascot. 5,800. It was a contest. 5,800 submissions came in from 38 from 35 countries. Bing Dwen Dwen is the name. What is that? And I just draw your a attention if you can. If you can kind of see like around the edges, uh -huh. like a suit. Th there's like an ice shell around oh. the mascot. The idea is the mascot with the ice shell can skate, can snowboard, uh, can ski, can do it I all. suppose oh, could bobsled at a moment's No, I don't know who'd want to do that, but you could just get on your back and, and oh, bobsled. Okay. What's the sure. name? What's the name? Uh, Bing, uh, Bing Dwen Dwen is Bing the name. Dwen Dwen. Bing Dwen Dwen. It's like a candy show with a chocolatey interior. You like it, right? Uh, hey, Steve, who usually walks away with most gold at the Winter Olympics? Yeah, would it, would it shock you to know that the all-time leader in gold medals at the Winter Olympics is Norway? It's oh. a Scandinavian country with 132. A third, though, of those gold medals that Norway has won, by the way, are in cross-country skiing. So that's a sport in particular they've excelled at. USA, though, by the way, oh. the good old USA is number two all time with 105. A couple things here. Speed skating is the top sport for gold medals all time for the U.S. But what's really changed the game, I'd say, in the last two decades for the U.S., Two sports have really exploded in popularity at the Winter Olympics, freestyle skiing yeah. and snowboarding. Uh, okay. And especially in snowboarding, the U.S. has really dominated, started racking up those medals. By the way, third place is Germany. The, the best sport in Germany all time for medals in the Winter Games is the biathlon. Well, on that note, we've got about a minute left. Of course, some records can be broken. Can you tell us what we can look out for from Team USA? Yeah, a couple that we can keep in. Well, Sean White, you're going to be hearing Sean White's sure. name a lot. You always hear his name when it comes to the Winter Olympics. 35 years old right now. That seems young to me. I think that's a little old for a snowboarder. But what he's going for, he's trying to get his fourth individual gold medal here. He's got three so far. Could he get a fourth one here at Beijing? Could be his last hurrah, too, at the Olympics. We just mentioned the biathlon, Germany's uh, top <laughs> sport all time. Sport. The one sport where the U.S. has never won gold, has never won a medal, I should say, at the Olympics. Maybe that would change. Also, for the first time, a non-binary athlete competing for the United States. Okay, I know we say this every day, but tomorrow no, on today, huge. it's huge. We are yeah. going to have 
a special Olympic kickoff show and live coverage of the opening ceremony. You can watch it live right here at 7. So we'll see you then. Have a great Thursday. This morning, best-selling cookbook author and chef, our friend Padma Lakshmi. That's right. Her latest cookbook is out right now, and it's called Tomatoes for Neela. And this morning, she's got some great ideas to share for healthy winter dishes. Padma, <clears throat> first of all, it's great to see you. And the ingredient we're starting with that we're focusing on is kale. It's like one of those superfoods. Yes, that's right. It is kale. I love kale. I try to throw it in every dish I have because it's a great hearty but healthy winter uh, green. You know, what I love about kale is that it's great raw, it's great wilted with dressing the next day. It's also wonderful cooked. It has a ton of vitamins, it has vitamin A, it has vitamin C, folate, it has vitamin B, vitamin K, it has a ton of antioxidants. It also has omega-3 uh, fatty um, acids, calcium, potassium, you name it. Ooh, hey, Ways you can use this hearty, hearty winter green. So I have two kinds of kale here. This is curly kale, mm -hmm. which you guys probably are familiar with. There's lots of uh, types of kale. And then I have this, which is called dragon kale. Dragon kale. kale. Uh, in Italian, it's called lacinato kale. Mm -hmm. And this is the kale that I like the best. You just want to take the center stem and strip that off and then just chop it. What I like to do is buy the kale whole, take, wash it, dry it on kitchen towels, take that center stem off and chop it up, and then put it in a bag and leave it in my crisper so it's always ready oh. for me to throw into um, all my soups and salads. You know, sometimes those lettuces are great. Mm -hmm. You don't finish your salad, you have to throw out the salad. Whereas if you have a salad made with kale, mm. instead of those lettuces, which are mostly water and are still great, but don't have the same nutrients, you can have that salad for two or three days. Hey, Padma, some people, I hear some people massage the kale. Mm -hmm. do, you, do, do you do that? Uh, I don't massage the kale. I just chop it fine. <laughs> you ain't fancy. All right, so, so what, what are we making? What I'm doing, we're going to bounce around with some recipes just because I'm cooking here. So I have sauteed some just plain yellow onion mm -hmm. with a little cumin seeds and some oil and two red chilies. You see that? Uh -huh. Those are sauteing and to that I'm going to add some minced ginger mm. and some minced garlic and that is going into some lentils also called dal which we'll make in a minute but I just want to get that going um, so it browns and cooks nicely. To that I'm adding a little bit of ground turmeric. You see that? I feel like I'm doing one of those beauty Instagram <laughs> And so I'm going to saute this and let that go. And while that's going, I'm going to show you this salad. Look at this beautiful Yum. salad. Ooh. The mozzarella. Chickpeas. Ready on today's show uh, for you guys a while back on another holiday season. It's just simple. Pomegranate, pearl mozzarella, the mm. mint, some serrano. Mm. It's dressed so basically with just <laughs> olive oil, balsamic, and lime juice. I'm going to take that salad and I'm going to add a bunch of chopped kale to it. And this salad then becomes more hearty yeah. and it lasts much longer than any other salad would. And it's filling, frankly, this would make a great lunch to take to the office or to school the next day. Um, my daughter, Krishna, takes this salad when she's got a field trip and she's the envy of all her mm -hmm. teachers. I What's the like dressing that. on that? Yeah, and the dressing will wilt the, um, kale so that it'll be beautiful the next day. All the juices mm -hmm. from the mozzarella and the pomegranate season that kale with the dressing. And look how beautiful that is. Mm. It's don't, you love the, don't you love the kale because it, it even wilted or even chopped up like that, it holds up against yeah. the dressings and sauces. It, it stays robust and doesn't wilt away. Exactly. Now you can see how these onions and ginger and garlic are frying and breaking down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got about 10 or 15 seconds. I would add pancetta this, to yeah. that, but that's me. Yeah. So I'm just going to add some tomato to that. Uh -huh. And here I have some yellow lentils. Oh, that yum. I love, love those. Salt. I'm adding kale to that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Like, I want that. this. I want this for me breakfast. Too. A stew, which is yum. Yum. But you could do chicken or beef, and I'm adding kale to that. Love it. There you go. 
Thank you, Padma. Padma, Padma we got to run. Yummy. We got to run. But all of these dishes are going to be on our website. Looks real good. Today.com slash food. In the city of angels, two kindly old ladies wanted to help homeless men get off the streets forever. And so they did. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, the new podcast from Dateline and Keith Morrison. We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon. And by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. News is happening now. Look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. Tonight, the major announcement of the COVID vaccine. And this is a significant moment. Your news, whenever it happens, wherever you are, it's here now. We're back with Today Food, and one of our very favorite guests, our pal, Bobby Flay. Oh, I'm so excited. He's an award-winning chef, the author of 216 best-selling 216? And we At can't least. forget about his hit show, <laughs> Beat Bobby Flay. By the way, new episode tonight, where two chefs go head-to-head in the kitchen for a chance to face off against the master himself. This morning, Bobby is sharing a fantastic pasta dish with us. Uh, good to see you, Mr. Flay. Good to see you guys. Bobby. Bobby. Thanks for waking up uh, yeah. early. What yeah, are we, what are we cooking, honey? So we're making uh, we're making a baked pasta. It's one of those dishes that I think is fantastic for like a Sunday night meal. It's very very comforting, and it's something that uh, can feed the whole family. So let's get started. It's going to be rigatoni. It's going to be some hot Italian sausage, some broccoli rabe, and some tomato sauce. A little vodka sauce in there as well. So I'm going to start off by cooking some rigatoni uh, in some salt and water. You know, you've seen this a million. On the Today Show, lots of salt in your water. Make sure it's boiling, abundance of water. We're gonna cook the rigatoni for about eight or nine minutes. Well, while that's cooking, we're gonna get our, get our sauce going. So we have some hot Italian sauces that I've cooked off a little bit. Some tomato sauce. I've made my own, um, but if you have a good, uh, a good quality tomato sauce that you like, you can definitely use that as well. And we're gonna add a little bit of vodka. This is that, uh, you know, one of, the, one of the most classic Italian-American pasta dishes is pasta alla vodka. It's basically a tomato sauce with a little bit of vodka in it and um, a touch of cream. So it, it, it almost becomes like a little bit of a paste sauce. Really delicious. What does the vodka yeah, do to it? Vo- What's that? What does the vodka do to it, Bobby? The vodka actually helps emulsify the cream in the tomato sauce so it doesn't, um, so it doesn't separate. It's, uh, it, it's sort of a binder in, in, in a sense. And also, it's like, I mean, who doesn't want to cook with vodka? I mean, there you go. <laughs> Oh. So, so, so basically, you're making like a creamy tomato sauce with the with the hot Italian sausage, and then um, just because we want to make sure that it's nice and healthy, I'm going to put some broccoli rub in there as well. Okay. And, um, and then we're going to take this sauce. I'm going to pour it right over the cooked pasta. This is some rigatoni that I had, you know, cooked ahead of time. Okay. So we're just going to we're going to cover the uh, the pasta in the sauce, and I'm going to add some fontina cheese to it. Yum. And this is all going to go into a casserole dish. And I mm. love cooking things, I, you know, I call it oven to table, where, you, where you, you, know, you create something in the kitchen, you put it in an earthenware or some sort of uh, oven-proof dish like mm-hmm. this one. So, Bobby, you did, put- did you cook that pasta al dente because it's going to be cooking longer in the oven? Yes. That's actually, I thought that's a great point. You want to cook it a little bit undercooked. So maybe like three quarters of the way because it's going to sit in the sauce. It's going to bake in the oven at about 350 degrees. And on top, we're going to put some fresh, some, some grated mozzarella and some Parmigiano Reggiano cheese. And then we're going to go to the oven. Hey, the Bobby, oven, how do you keep it from sticking on the bottom? Oh, it's not going to stick because, we, you know, there's lots of tomato sauce in there. It's going to be totally fine. Oh, and actually, if it, um, if it gets a little crusty on top, that's actually a good thing. It's like, you know, like when you have the lasagna, and the, and, the, and the edges and the crispiness mm-hmm. on the, around the 
when you always want that part of it. You get, you definitely get a little bit of this as well. You want to let this bake in the oven about 350 degrees for, I don't know, about 15 to 20 minutes, because don't forget, the pasta's already cooked, the sauce is already hot, we're just heating it up, and then at the last second, for the last three or four minutes, turn your oven up to Whoa. broil, and mm. pour yourself a and cook the time. This is part of the recipe, by the way. And then take out your, uh, take out your, your pasta, and you can see, this is what it's gonna look like. Let's see. Oh my gosh. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, I hope that's what I'm that's talking about. Oh. If you're watching this at home, make sure. Yeah. And there you go. Oh, it's delicious. Make, Man, make it about this weekend. Yeah. And then basically, you know, you can just take a, take a little bit and just try to kind of put it in a bowl. Look at that. Nice and chewy, uh, cheesy. Yeah. Just look at that. That's I mean, good. after looking at that, Bobby, it's amazing that anybody beats you on Beat Bobby Flay. Yeah. How's it going over there? Beat Bobby Flay is great. We've done, uh, We've done close to 400 episodes, which is insane. <laughs> but I have to tell you, I'm having more fun than ever. Um, it's so great to be able to welcome, you know, you know, chefs all over the country to come in and, and take me down. It's actually way more fun when I lose because the chefs are so excited. It's great for their community when they win. You, you know, they usually have like all these, they have like viewing parties in their, in their local community. It's great. Be Bobby Flay has been so much fun for me for the last, does, I don't know, does six, your, seven years. Does your girlfriend like watching it? <laughs> <laughs> you guys, Carson asked me if my girlfriend was awake. Oh. The only person awake right now in L.A. is me cooking baked pasta for you. It's 5.50 in the morning. How yeah, well, if you would just yeah. pull that sausage out of that dish, then she'd have a dish that she could eat if you were a little more thoughtful. Oh, yeah. actually, Carson, you know what? You, you've actually done your research because Christi Christina does not eat meat. I know that. So yes. if you get the sausage out of here, she's all good. There you go. We just put a, well, we just put up a picture of her there as well. <laughs> well, he, last time Bobby was on, he was very secretive about this whole relationship. Yeah, like, then he spilled his guts to People Magazine. Now it's fair game. Oh, so she's a yeah. lovely, yeah. lovely, yeah. lovely you lady. Hey, Bobby, real quick. We, we loved your restaurants in New York yeah. City. So amazing over the years. Anything new on the horizon? Anything we can look forward to? In New York City, um, well, we're, we're sort of in the wait and see kind of thing right now for New York because, you know, I've, I've always had restaurants in New York my entire adult life. And, uh, you know, we're just going to see what happens. You know, I just opened the Malfi in Las Vegas about five or six months ago. That's going really well. And uh, listen, you know, New York has my heart. So at mm -hmm. some point, we'll be back there. All right. We'll All right. Thanks, Thanks, Bobby. Thank you, Bobby. We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? week-long journey across America from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital you rarely see. It's your last movie. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? News is happening now. Look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. Tonight, the major announcement of the COVID vaccine. And this is a significant moment. Your news, whenever it happens, wherever you are, it's here now. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? journey, every triumph. And it all starts here. Let the celebration begin! The excitement is in the air. The the United United States. States. Is he superhuman? Feel the magic every day. She is a superstar. <laughs> Kayla, we are cheering you on. And share every moment with us at the Winter Olympics. Today, today, today. Today, today is where the games begin. We're back with Today Food, and this morning we're going to put a healthier twist on a classic comfort dish. That's right, the one and only Gianna De Laurentiis joining us this morning ahead of the premiere of her new Food Network show, Simply 
Giada. She's going to cook up some of her favorite light and flavorful, flavorful recipes on the show. She's going to do it for us this morning as well. Always good to see you, Giada. Good morning. Hey, get out. guys. Good morning. <laughs> Let's Really quickly, though, how are you and Jade doing? We noticed on Instagram that, that you two were social distancing. All, <laughs> all is okay now? We were, yes, yes, all is okay now. Jade had COVID and I was trying to avoid COVID. Listen, but, you know, yeah. Good plan. A lot of people can relate to that. I feel like I should have just let it go. Yeah. But yes, yeah. we're all set. We're all better now. Good. Well, we're glad we're doing well. We know, listen, nothing can stop you from, from cooking. Uh, and with so many of us at home, Never. we need your help. What are your thoughts on, let's do tonight's dinner. What's on the menu? So chicken mayonnaise is um, uh, for dinner tonight. So I think most people know what chicken mayonnaise is. But basically, chicken cutlets, pound it thin. Or you can buy chicken cutlets at the store. And I'm lightening them up. The whole idea of Simply Jada that airs this Sunday is that I'm basically all the recipes are inspired by my cookbook that came out mm, about a year ago. I eat better, feel better. So it's about eating better and not skipping on flavor. So we're taking the chicken. We seasoned it with salt and pepper. We're putting it in um, brown rice flour, which makes this dish gluten-free and really lightens it up quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So you dredge in a little bit of brown rice flour, then a little bit of beaten egg, and you season all of the ingredients, the mm -hmm. flour, the egg, with a little bit of salt, and panko breadcrumbs, but we're going to use gluten-free breadcrumbs. Mm -hmm. They give it a nice, crispy sort of crust on the chicken, but they also make it gluten-free for everybody. So it's a little easier on your tummy. You so know? you're kind of double so dredging it's a great way to eat. I'm dredging it, yes, mm. in a little bit of the breadcrumb mixture. And then what we do is we come over here to the pan, and I've already got one now sort of cooking away. I put a little bit of olive oil in the pan, and you can use avocado oil, safflower oil. Um, the olive oil just gives it a nice golden crust, as you can see. And we just cook this in here for about a couple of minutes. Yum. We get this nice golden crust. And then I love to serve it with a little bit of arugula on top and um, just some fresh lemon right over it. And that's basically dinner. And it Yum. makes it really satisfying without skipping on flavor, but really good and clean. And I have to tell you, it's pretty simple. You know, sometimes we get these recipes where, you know, I want to do it, but there's a lot involved. This is something that everybody can do. Yeah, and you know what? Honestly, you could even make it earlier in the day and pop it in the oven at about 250, 200, warm up the chicken. You can make a sandwich out of it, or you could just reheat it and eat it for dinner. I was so going to say, for leftovers, with leftovers, Jada, that thing looks like it would be a fantastic mm -hmm. on, on a hoagie or something like that with a little tomato sauce. <laughs> Yes, on a hoagie, for sure. I that'll kind of lighten it up. That runs wouldn't counter. That, wouldn't that yeah. lighten it up? I mean, that that actually might lighten it up, Al, but okay. Runs counter oh, to what she's yeah, trying yeah, to yeah. do here. All right. Uh -huh. Jada, really quick, how long on each side did you cook that? Um, I cooked it about four minutes on each side, but it kind of depends on how thin your cutlet is. I pounded mm -hmm. my chicken breast because I couldn't find any cutlets yesterday. But um, if they're really, really thin, it only takes like two, three minutes on each side. So it's very, very, very fast dinner that is really quite scrumptious. Because who doesn't like fried chicken? That's pretty much what it is. Yeah. But a lightened up version. Hey, Jada, Jada, what would you serve with that the, mm. uh, out of the cookbook uh, that's a little lighter that you normally wouldn't uh, have lighter? You mean um, alongside it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, like you could do a quinoa or a brown rice um, on the side of it. You could use, you know, like a tomato sauce. You could add tomato sauce to the brown rice or to the quinoa to add more flavor. Oh, that's good. Um, mm. So it would almost be like a chicken farm, but not really, but right. sort of on the same flavor profile. Um, so I like to do that with gluten-free pasta. Jane really likes it with gluten-free pasta. Yeah. I mean, she really likes it with regular pasta, but yeah. when we're kind of lighting things up, we use gluten-free. Gianna, yeah. thank you. Thank you so much, as always. Happy New Year. Great to see you guys. Happy New Year, in the studio. Mm -hmm. Uh, which that chicken we're here in the studio as well. <laughs> you can find the recipe on today.com slash food, by the way, and be sure to check out Giada's new show on Food Network, All Simply right. Giada. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. I believe, I believe. Every dream, journey, and triumph. And it all starts here. United States, let's go! Feel the magic every day. The excitement is in the air. At the Winter Olympics, today is where the games begin. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. 
My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Our week-long journey across America, from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. It's your last movie. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. You know the saying, chicken soup is good for the soul, especially in the cold months. And someone who loves chicken soup so much he makes it for his family all the time is celebrity chef Jeffrey Zakarian. He's the co-host of the Food Network's The Kitchen. Right now he's in his kitchen. He's at home in Florida. Hey, Jeffrey. Hi, I'm sorry I'm in Florida. It's 50 here, but I, I know it's really cold there. You know, that's know. Just We didn't cruel. know you lived in Florida, and now we're kind of angry at your jealous. tan. Look at your tan. I no, I'm, I'm tan all the time. You know that. Anyway, <laughs> everybody loves a good chicken soup, and what I'm doing here is I'm going to do a mashup, right? I'm doing a chicken noodle ramen mashup, mm. and the reason why I like it is you talk about healthy eating, New Year, really delicious, but also yummy. I mean, food has to be yummy. I don't know about you guys, but yes. if it's not yummy, I don't want it. But look at this. Look at all these gorgeous vegetables. Mm. That's right from the market. Beautiful. There's nothing fancy here. Carrots, parsnips, some onions, some leeks, some great herbs and ginger. And it's very simple. So let's start with our vegetables, okay? So we're gonna make sure our vegetables are cut evenly. Why? Because they cook evenly. Really important. Oh, but all a soup the same size. Is, that makes sense. All yes. the same size. A soup is so easy. Just follow these techniques and you're gonna be very, very happy. And, and the addition to making this soup is you get leftover stock that you can freeze. Okay, we're gonna take our celery, our carrots, we're gonna just cut them on the bias like this, very simply, and it's very easy once they're lined up together to make sure they're, they're the same the size, same. really yeah. easy. So we've taken our leek and um, what you make sure you cut it open and you wash it because there is dirt in there mm -hmm. and just follow the same yeah. methodology. Just a nice, probably this is quarter inch, I'm just guessing quarter inch, but everything's gonna be ready at the same time. So it shouldn't take that long to cook a proper soup. The stock takes the most time. It's like cooking the chicken takes about like an hour. Now parsnips, I love parsnips guys because they have a sweetness that is just uh -huh. yeah, remarkable. Crispy. So, hey Jeffrey, crispy and Jeffrey yummy. Why, why leeks instead of like another kind of onion? Here's a tip, leeks have less sulfur than onion so your stock stays lighter, it doesn't darken. You know, sometimes it oh, yeah. turns really brown and I use leeks, it's a little secret of a chef. Okay. All right. So are you ready for the big ready. deal? Yes, let's, let's cook, cook the chicken. a chicken. Yes, sir. Very easy. We have our veggies. We're going to go over by, by the, my beautiful wife is holding the camera. She's the camera person today. So we have a pot, a very big pot, and we're going to put it on high. And we're using a four pound chicken just like this. Use a tong so you don't have to touch the chicken and just put that right in there. All right. And then another secret, guys, chicken wings. Oh, tons of gelatin and tons of meat. There's tons of meat on chicken wings. We're going to put those wait, in. Wait, and then, no, okay, sorry. You we, had us until we, you said the word we gelatin. For a second. What does that gelatin. mean? Gelatin. Gelatin is that stuff that umami you taste when you smell soup that your uh -huh. mom's cooking or your grandmother cooked. And the schmaltz is the chicken fat. So all that together right. is loaded in those chicken wings. And then chicken word. stock. Now, you just cover this. Notice, no water, no salt, no pepper, nothing at all, just chicken stock. Mm. You could use water, but I like to get it up just a bit, just jab it a bit. And I put a touch of white wine vinegar or Ooh. wine. You don't have mm -hmm. to, just a little acid. Now, we're gonna let that chicken go for about an hour. Once it comes out, we're gonna put it on a rack, let it cool, and then we're gonna take all the delicious yes, chicken off. peel it, it off. So, you take the bones out, or you, yeah. I right. take the bones out, everything, okay. and then we have our beautiful stock. And remember those veggies we cut perfectly? Yes. I know you know how to do that now. Yeah. All right. We're just going to slide that slide in there. Away. And magic, a couple of peas. You take frozen peas. Oh. I think this is going to probably take 10 minutes. You have all the flavor there. The miso is really special. The miso is soybean paste. It gives a little saltiness. It's really, really delicious. Where's so the ramen? We the ramen. Ah, where's the ramen? It's coming. All right. So remember, we have our soup, our beautiful veg 
Our vegetables are in there, mm -hmm. and like, can you get in there, Margaret, and take a look at that? How Pretty gorgeous that looks! Margaret. Shot, Margaret. Oh. Yeah, good shot. Are no. you ready? Okay, yeah, we need the ready. ramen though, because we came for the ramen. Yes. You came for the ramen. So we're going to take a big bowl. I like to serve this in giant bowls. I have our pre-cooked ramen. Oh. This is beautiful whole wheat ramen. I just oh, put that in the bottom. Whole, where do you buy whole wheat ramen? Anywhere? Uh, there's tons of it. Tons of it. Oh. You can use regular, but I like the whole wheat, right? Yeah, it's now better gonna, for you. Now we're going to have some fun. Now we're doing the mashup part, right? Oh. We're going to pour this glorious, mm. healthy, Ooh, gorgeous soup ramen. on top. Look at that. Yum. Full ramen. That. Takes me back to my college yes. days. Yeah. Right, and then some Sprinkle chicken. Now I choose to put the chicken mm -hmm. on, oh, the chicken just like this. I don't put the chicken in the stock because I don't want it to get overcooked. And a lot of people store their chicken Neither in the stock. Yeah. And, yeah. And what happens? It gets overcooked. And now the secret. Now we have fun. Now we have our scallions. It's uh -huh. going to be like we're making a fro. Press it up. Yes. We're going to put some some beautiful pea shoots, some scallions. Some bamboo shoots. Have fun here. I'm using whatever I found at the uh, at the farmers market uh -huh. uh, or at the grocery market. Some radishes. radishes. Ooh. Oh, ginger. Jeffrey, Jeffrey got thank you. We got to roll, Jeffrey. It looks so yummy. It really does. You did great. Thank you, Jeffrey. Bon appetit. Thank you, thank you, thank you Margaret. Margaret. Tell your daughters, hey. All right. All right, guys. For this recipe, Bye. head to today.com/food. <laughs>10 days into the new year and if you're already finding it hard to eat healthier or you haven't even started yet guess what here's your monday motivation it's never too late always okay start on monday. we can always count on today nutritionist and our pal joy bauer to whip up something healthy and delicious joy a lot of people we didn't get a real reset so we're res re resetting today so what do you have for us today I am so crazy excited to show you how to make this meal i think it's going to be on repeat in both of your homes and it's super Kid friendly. Okay. So this is a turkey bolognese. Mm. It's obviously it's healthified. It's packed with protein, vitamins, minerals, antioxidants. But I'm telling you the best part, it is a one pot wonder. And I think you're gonna be amazed how easy this thing comes together. Okay, and you've so, decided to swap beef for turkey. Is that because it's a little leaner? Starting. That's what you're supposed to do? That's right. Yeah. So here, what this is a pound of lean ground turkey. And when you shop for it at the store, look for a turkey that is between 90 and 94% lean, because it's still gonna be flavorful and juicy. If you get up to the 99% lean, it's too dry. So between 90 mm, and 94%. 94. After this was already cooked, what I've done is I threw in, you can see here all the vegetables. I have diced celery, red bell pepper, onion, and carrots. And I saute it with the meat. Uh. But because I want to save a little bit of time, because I'm going to nail this thing before we close the spot. Okay. <laughs> I pre-sauteed all of the yummy vegetables. And now we basically have a nutrition party in this pot. Okay. We now take... This is a 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes. Oh, wow. One yeah. cup of broth, whatever you have in the fridge. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna take another easy way out. And instead of dealing with separate seasonings, I have here just five teaspoons of Italian seasoning. So this adds mm, oregano mm -hmm. and basil and thyme, yeah. And then I'm stir this whole thing up. I'm gonna put it on the stove, let it cook for about 25 minutes covered can you I ask, uncover it can i ask one question joy show. just to be clear yeah. so the turkey was already cooked and you uh, if you were just starting from scratch you'd put in the raw turkey and all the veggies at together the at the same time and no, I'm, I'm so glad you asked that no so first what i do is i in stages i cook the ground turkey first By and itself. it takes about six minutes right and i'm just sort of chopping it up when the ground turkey is cooked and there's no more pink, then I throw in the veggies. Oh. We're building, and it's another six to eight minutes. Okay. And then you you throw Ooh, in everything else, that. and look at this. That looks like a sloppy and joe. So, <laughs> mm. so you know, it's it. interesting that you say that, Hoda, because I actually like to put it on toasted English muffins Ooh. or in soft, like, Portuguese buns. Oh, my goodness. So now I'm going to take this pasta. Now, yes, what is this you can pasta? eat whole... Yeah. This is a whole grain pasta. Yeah. And for people that are sensitive to cutting back on carbs, you can use zoodles, which are zucchini noodles, or you can also do spaghetti squash. Um, mm -hmm. Wait, I have over here some parm because you guys know everything's better with a little oh, bit of yeah. parm. Oh, oh, yeah. Look at that. Mm -hmm. By is the way, this amazing? I've seen some chickpea, like some other kind of flour pasta. Are those better for you? 
That's what this is, actually. Oh. So I said it was a whole grain, but if you opened up my cabinet, I have true whole grain, which is just 100% whole wheat. But I also have so many different brands of, like, chickpea or bean or lentil pasta. I would suggest people experiment around. It has a little bit more protein and it has a little bit more fiber. It really depends mm. on what you prefer in terms of your taste. One other thing I'm going to do as soon as we um, shut down the segment, yeah. I'm going to try to make a bolognese burrito. Oh, I'll yes. let you know how it works out. I'm going to put it in a wrap. Yes, with a yes. lot of cheese on it. We love a bolognese the... burrito. Yes. Joy. Yes. Joy. Yes. We miss you. We miss you. Oh, it's good no. to see you, though. To get this recipe, head to today.com slash food. <laughs> So um, at the time I was living in Paris, I was just a couple months out of college and I was working as a paralegal and pursuing this other, you know, stringer position on the side. And I hadn't been feeling well for a while. It started with an itch and the itch blossomed into all kinds of mysterious symptoms. Mm -hmm. I was getting colds all the time and coming down with bouts of bronchitis. Uh, but the biggest symptom I had was fatigue. Mm. But of course, at 22, everyone is tired. Yeah. Everyone that I was hanging out with was working hard and going out at night dancing. And so I didn't really make much of it. And I went to see a number of doctors, all of whom, you know, treated that specific symptom or ailment right. and sent me home. And toward the end of my time in Paris, I started to get the feeling that my doctors that I was seeing weren't taking me seriously mm -hmm. but I think the truth is I wasn't entirely taking myself seriously mm -hmm. and it was only when I got to a point where I was so weak it was a struggle to walk up and down the stairs that I found myself in an emergency room and within 24 hours I was on a plane back home to wow. upstate New York and I got the bone marrow biopsy that led to my actual diagnosis to hear the words that you were diagnosed with a specific type of leukemia at 22 is scary enough, but when they said the chances of survival were one in three, I mean, my God, yeah. like what does a, what goes through a 22 year old's head? I think there was this immediate sense of fracture. There was my life before yeah. and everything that came after. And, you know, I never returned to Paris, to my apartment, to my job. Friends packed up my things and, and mm. sent them to my house. And I had this sense, even though I couldn't quite wrap my head around what it meant to have a cancer diagnosis at 22, that the person I'd been before was buried. There was mm. no returning mm. to that pre-diagnosis self. The cancer fight, and it, I don't know how y you describe it, but it usually there's a beginning and an end point for it. I mean, I had breast cancer. I think for six or eight months, I went through stuff. Yeah. Your timing, the, the three and a half, was it three and a half, four years of going through chemo and bone marrow and chemo again how did you see light and how mm -hmm. did you survive all those days one of the most challenging parts of that experience was the sense of the goalposts moving mm -hmm. i didn't know you know on day one that i was going to be in treatment for three and a half years and they say you can survive anything as long as you can see the end date yeah. in sight and there came a point in my treatment where i couldn't see that end in sight mm. and that was the most challenging, I think, to know how to kind of anchor yourself when you're swimming in a sea of uncertainty. I mean, there are life lessons that come in your worst times. I mean, some change we, we choose in our life and some is cast upon us and mm. you have to figure it out. And I don't know, I remember so clearly how the world got clear. Like it, I was never clear. I think I was kind of always mushy about things. Mm. Those are my friends. I don't love that one so much, but so what? They're nice. I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. And then all of a sudden you realize like, my life has a beginning and an end and I'm not wasting time. Like that time is over. Yeah. Did you have that sensation? Yeah, I think like, you know, a lot of people in their early 20s, I had this feeling of time. Yes. I had time to figure out who I was, time to figure out what I wanted to do. 
And that diagnosis brought into immediate, urgent focus the fact that we're all here for a finite Mm -hmm. period of time. And I felt a strange sense of urgency around time. Mm -hmm. And I had the same experience. It felt like all the artifice just kind of fell away. Yeah, I got clear not only about who my friends were, but maybe more importantly, who I wanted to be friends with and what Mm. kind of relationships I wanted to cultivate. And I had such limited energy that I was well enough to maybe do three things every day, small Mm. things like write an email, watch a movie, see a friend. And what that meant for me was that I had to get very clear about my priorities. Wow. That is so true. And it, there's something so strange about how free you feel suddenly. You didn't even realize you were carrying all that heavy junk around. Yeah. It's like, I didn't even, you know, you don't even realize it. It's like my shoulders feel lighter, even Perfect. though you're in the middle of it. So to have a doctor say to you after a bone marrow transplant and chemo again, okay, I don't know if he used the term cancer free or mm-hmm. you are in remission, but to hear those words, what did, what did that moment feel like? Mm. I mean, I had been hoping to hear those words for almost three and a half years. The goal had always been to survive. And I'd spent, you know, 1400 days working tirelessly toward that goal. And I thought when I got to that place, I would want to celebrate. Yeah, I wanted to feel grateful. I wanted to quickly and organically fold back into the rhythms of living. But instead, I found myself in this kind of limbo, this kind of in-between place where on paper, I was better. Mm -hmm. But off paper, I couldn't have felt further from being the healthy, happy, you know, 27-year-old that I'd hoped to be on the other side of all this. Especially because when you spend almost, well, three and a half years in one space, the, it's the same thing, the idea that, okay, now this is over and all your friends or some of your friends and colleagues are saying, oh, great, so now we can go back to the way it was. Let's go out to the bar. Let's go have some fun. Exactly. You weren't feeling those things. Yeah, I wanted to be you feeling wanted those to, yeah. things. But, you know, I think often when we talk about things like cancer, the kind of final act yeah. or the end of the story is comes with a cure. Uh, but we mm-hmm. don't talk a lot about what happens after. Mm-hmm. And... It took me a a while to even acknowledge to myself how much I was struggling. There were so many unanswered questions that I didn't know what to do with. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, how do I find a job when I need to nap for four hours Mm -hmm. in the day or my immune system is still sending me to the emergency room on Mm -hmm. a regular basis? How do I date when I have a quarter inch of hair and a port still in my chest, how do I talk about, you know, the side effects of chemo, like infertility or early menopause? Like all of it felt so overwhelming. And in a weird way, I found myself almost wishing that I was still sick, not because I wanted to have leukemia, of course, but I understood the hospital ecosystem. Right. That was the world right. I lived in for four years. I felt comfortable there. I looked like the other patients. It was the outside world Mm -hmm. that felt scary and foreign and daunting to me. The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world, because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. 
This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. The Sunday Sit Down with Willie Geist podcast. It's the conversations you want to have with the people you'd love to meet. Get your money's worth. Unedited, unfiltered. See ya. Sit down with Willie and listen wherever you get your podcasts. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? So I love your New York Times column. I thought it was so beautiful and riveting and moving. But what I loved so much more was when people reached out to you because they wanted, because they, they connected with you. You had mm -hmm. this way that whether you were sick before or you weren't, or you knew, somehow people felt you, like they, you reached across and you grabbed them by the heart. Mm -hmm. And people wrote you letters. And you know, in, in this industry, sometimes you get a letter and you got beautiful letters and you read them, but then you did something totally amazing. Like I have not, <laughs> I have not heard of someone doing this, but what did you do with those letters that you got? So, you know, in that year after I finished treatment, I was in the most lost place yeah. I've ever been. I knew I wasn't a cancer patient anymore. I knew I couldn't return to the person I'd been pre-diagnosis, but I had no idea who I was. And so I started thinking about these different rites of passages that we have in our culture, these kind of ritualized ceremonies that help us move through transitions mm -hmm. like baby showers and mm -hmm. weddings and funerals. And I realized that there wasn't a kind of ritual or rite of passage when you emerge from a long illness. Mm -hmm. And I needed that. I needed time to reckon with what I'd been through and to reflect on yeah. who I wanted to become. I needed the space away from my home and my kind of cancer identity to really kind of come into my own. And so I hatched this kind of boondoggle <laughs> of a plan and I decided to learn how to drive. You hadn't, you didn't have your license. I did not have my license. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I rented out my apartment yeah. and I borrowed a friend's car and I ended up embarking on a 15,000 mile road trip across the country to meet some of the strangers who'd written me letters about their own major life interruptions mm. and their own stories of transition. And they really, you know, those individuals, there were about 22 of them that I visited, became my sort of breadcrumb trail through the wilderness of survivorship. Mm. I was always prepared for the other shoe to drop, uh. prepared for something to go wrong. And what I found instead in these encounters and on that road trip was that the world really welcomed me at mm. every turn. I ended up you know, staying on someone's fold out couch. I stayed on a ranch in Wyoming with a family of survivalist ranchers. I visited a high school teacher in California who was grieving the death of her son. I oh. went to uh, a maximum security prison in Texas to visit a death row convict. And each of those conversations helped me gain a sense of perspective mm. on my own predicament. But more than that, I think it showed me a way to reimagine community. And it gave me this sense of connection that at a time in my life when I felt so lost and so isolated, really helped me see a path forward. Are you happy? I'm so happy. <laughs> what, what makes you happy now? The strange thing in the last year of this pandemic is I found myself uh, living a, a version of the life that I had when I was sick, which mm. is to say that my circle is much smaller, smaller right. my life is quieter. And I don't know about you, but 
I have spent so much of the last decade striving and working and hustling, and I feel so privileged to get to do work that I love. Mm-hmm. But I've also been thinking about the way that that working at that pace can be its own kind mm-hmm. of trauma response. Mm-hmm. So this year for me, my goal has been leisure, uh, which isn't to say I'm not working all the of time. You are. Yeah, but you know, these small moments that I've gotten to have in the last year of of being at home with our dogs, of gardening, of hanging out with my partner, John. You know, it's so interesting because I I sometimes think like life is full of exclamation points. It's like the good ones. You graduated from college, you meet a great guy, you have a baby, you get married. And then on the flip side, it's you get a sad diagnosis, somebody passes away, etc. But most of the days Mm. are just Wednesday in the middle. Nothing terrific and nothing horrible, just Wednesday. Yeah. Something I've been thinking about recently is trying to approach my Wednesday as ritual, Hmm. washing the dishes as ritual, Mm -hmm. gardening as ritual, and really trying to kind of slow down and, and savor that because it's so easy to move from one exclamation point to the next but I'm sure as you know you know when you get a scary diagnosis you're not thinking about the things that are on your resume Mm -hmm. you're thinking about the people you love Mm -hmm. and wanting to spend time with them you're thinking about the things that nourish you Mm -hmm. and yeah all the rest doesn't matter as much and it falls away you know we live in a country that has this culture uh, or this anxiety of around accomplishment. Um, and in this season in my life, I'm trying very hard um, to resist that and, and to kind of center myself back in those things that I love, the same things that I loved as a little girl, the dancing and music and, and writing and, and family. Speaking of music, music has always been a big part of your life. Music has always been a big part of my life. Which explains your very handsome and awesome boyfriend. <laughs> if you don't know John Baptiste, and we're going to bring him in here in just a second, but he's a cool cat, boy. Is he something special? He is. The Sunday Sit Down with Willie Geist podcast. It's the conversations you want to have with the people you'd love to meet. Get your money's worth. Unedited, unfiltered. See ya. Sit down with Willie and listen wherever you get your podcasts. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. I believe, I believe. Every dream, journey, and triumph. And it all starts here. United States, let's go! Feel the magic every day. The excitement is in the air. At the Winter Olympics, today is where the games begin. We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. In the City of Angels, two kindly old ladies wanted to help homeless men get off the streets forever. And so they did. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, the new podcast from Dateline and Keith Morrison. We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. In the City of Angels, two kindly old ladies wanted to help homeless men get off the streets forever. And so they did. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, the new podcast from Dateline and Keith Morrison. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. I believe, I believe. Every dream, every journey, Every triumph. And it all starts here. Let the celebration begin! The excitement is in the air. The United United States. States. Which is he superhuman? Feel the magic every day. She is a superstar. <laughs> Kayla, we are cheering <laughs> you on. Right. And share every moment with us at the Winter Olympics. Today. Today. Today, Today. Today is where the games begin. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast, free wherever you get your podcasts. 
I'm sitting smack dab in the middle of a love story. <laughs> um, okay, so you're 13 years old. You're both geeks. I know you are at 13 because nobody was not a geek at 13. Oh, yes. So are you guys close to the same age? Yeah, we're about a year and a half apart. A year and a half apart. Mm -hmm. So, uh, John, do you remember uh, your girl from band camp at age 13? <laughs> so here's what I remember. Uh-huh. I remember Birkenstocks. This is not an endorsement. You had Birkenstocks on? Before they were cool. Yeah. <laughs> she was ahead. Suleika was ahead. Now, and I also must say, I am, am honored to talk to you because when I was growing up at that time, I was watching you on WWL. Come on. Oh. Come on. <laughs> so... When I was growing up in New Orleans, <laughs> Kenner, Louisiana, uh -huh. you'd be on TV. My first time leaving was to go to this band camp. First time <laughs> leaving home and being somewhere for the summer. You go somewhere for the summer for the first time, it's like a new world. Yeah, where you, was band camp? Where were you? Saratoga Springs. Oh, so you took a big trip. This yes. was not a nothing. All um, right. Upstate New York. <laughs> so you were already, what instrument were you playing, John, at the Piano. time? Piano, and I saw her in the courtyard and this is, you know, again, I thought this was maybe a New York thing. People wear Birkenstocks. <laughs> Nobody was wearing that in New Orleans. No, they weren't. Those were not cool in New Orleans. And I thought it, it would, what immediately came to my mind was, oh, she's like a, a hippie. <laughs> you know, like granola. Like <laughs> that vibe. Crunchy granola. <laughs> uh, and how did you, at 13, were you, at, what, did you have any confidence level at 13? Or were you like a lot of 13-year-old girls? You did? She did. Definitely. I was what? a 13 year old Definitely. going on 20. I thought I was far more mature than I actually was. That's Definitely. impressive. <laughs> Most 13 year old girls feel so incredibly awkward. I was just coming out of what I call UDS, ugly duckling syndrome. <laughs> I'd just gotten contacts for the first oh, time to replace hot my, uh -huh. my bottle Definitely. thick glasses. <laughs> okay, so now at 13, that's when the crushes start happening. Was there a crush or were you all just friends? No, no, no crush. Yeah. I would. I was very much a uh, late bloomer, uh -huh. <laughs> so I was into music and video games uh -huh. and martial arts and chess, <laughs> things like Eclectic. that. Eclectic. You got a nice array. Uh, all the nerdy activities. <laughs> yeah. I was about to say all the introspective kind okay. of uh, introvert activities. Yeah. So you see. So like when you saw him, was did you just thought a, a, a nice kid, nice guy? <laughs> I remember thinking he was a little strange because I I think I tried to initiate a conversation and conversation was not happening. You were not into it. You just weren't a conversationalist then. I think there's a glorious awkwardness <laughs> in uh, coming into your own at that age. Yeah, and it's I think weird. I, it's it's strange, but a beautiful strange. And I feel like I've kept that until adulthood <laughs> but you know i still you know i feel like we probably tried to speak and at that time anybody who i talked to yeah and she's always been a great communicator yeah. always magnetic always yeah. able to communicate she's got it. the emotions that other people are feeling I, I noticed that about her immediately yeah um but there was no crush we 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 linked later in college and that's when we started to really become more friends you know what's weird mm -hmm. i am my First, my first week at Juilliard, I was on the one train with my friend Michelle, and I had no, you know, I hadn't thought about John since band camp several years earlier, which oh, when you're a teenager good. feels yeah. like a decade. <laughs> and I see this young man on the train who is singing to himself and playing the air piano. Yes, and yes. people were kind of staring because even in New York, that's not a site that you see every day. And I looked at him and I turned to my friend and I said, that's John Batiste. What is he doing here? And I said, that's the man I'm going to marry someday. Wait. And I just wait, blurted wait, it out wait, and forgot stop about it. it. St I want to stop for a second. <laughs> On the one train, you knew you were going to marry John? It, it was like one of those things you just say, and I didn't think about it, and I didn't give it much weight. <laughs> so is that the last you see of her before you know she's not feeling well? No. Mm -hmm. we, we saw each other. This is in college, my yeah. first year, her last year of high school then she doesn't end up going to Jula. Right. she goes to Princeton then right. at Princeton she has this um, incredible time we don't see each other in passing we see each other at performances here and there right. we have mutual friends but we're not really as connected, connected. Yeah. then she has a going away party because she's moving you move into Paris and 
I went to the going away party with a mutual friend of ours. Mm -hmm. But then that was when there was a, a spark at that party, the oh. going away party. But oh. she was going away. Going to Paris. So bye. That it was not you know oh, the time. You were pining, John, <laughs> a little, a little. You're pining we a little. We had a, a, a moment. Uh -huh. We had a moment. Well, you got to have a moment. I mean, come on, going to Paris, y'all. There's love in the air. Okay, so let's fast forward to how did you learn that Suleika was, was ill, was not well? So that same friend, Michelle, told me one day, we um, were playing, you know, my band, we would play in public places often, mm -hmm. you know, for, not for money, just to bring mm -hmm. the music, revelry, mm -hmm. joy. Uh, we were playing in the subway one mm -hmm. day, and um, mm -hmm. she told me, and I gathered the rest of my band, because at this time it was just a few of us, mm -hmm. and I gathered the rest of them, and we went to the hospital. Mm -hmm. And, and um, you know, I hadn't heard that she was that ill until that moment. Mm -hmm. it, was a, it was a real moment of clarity that I had to do something. And what mm -hmm. I do is music. I just felt I needed to bring that to the situation to help in any way that I could. So that's what I did. But that must have been emotional because you didn't expect to, to see her in that way. I, I, I guess there's an impact that a person has on you that you don't know the full extent of until you're in a moment of mm -hmm. crisis. So it felt like I needed to do something in that moment. Even though we weren't super close friends, it felt like, oh, I really connect with this person. I respect this person, what she's all about, what I know of her. This is... This is important. So that's why we went to the, the hospital and we played and it was a beautiful experience. Did you feel like you were doing some good? Yes, I, I felt like we were doing good, but that's that was a, a special thing for our relationship, a special time to, to, you know, you see each other through these different phases and you see what a person is like when they're 13, 14. Then you see what a person is like at the beginning of college you see what a person is like when they finish college and going out into the world. Then you see what a person is like when they're going through tremendous duress, the impact of that on their life, meeting the family, understanding, you know, how that impacts a whole community. But it's also <laughs> a testament to John, because John is someone who, who shows up in the difficult moments and who keeps on showing up, not just for me, but for everybody. Mm. Um, and he's always been that way. <laughs> Well, I, you, you, you got to show them. <laughs> you got to show people you love them. Mm -hmm. I, I urge everybody out there, you show the person in your life who you haven't told or you haven't shown your love, show them. So what's, uh, what's the future with you two? Well, you, we were talking about the, uh, the kids mm -hmm. you, that, that, that you have in your life. That's a beautiful thing to have family. We, uh, we look forward to something in that realm you know there's complications yeah um you know i don't i, I don't i don't feel like that is ever a barrier to no. family because you it's can not. you can plenty of ways out. to make mm -hmm. a family right yeah I, I think it's possible it's it's all about love well and i'll just say like i think one of my big anxieties coming out of this illness was finding a partner who understood that mm -hmm. and who wasn't sort of scared of having hard conversations or awkward mm -hmm. conversations around things. Um, and I remember talking to John about infertility early on mm -hmm. uh, as a result of my treatment. And he said, there are many ways to make a family mm. and it's its own kind of creative act. And you've just been understanding and, and open in a way that I wish were the norm. Um, wow. But that I feel very grateful for. Is She's got to be real. Come on. She's a very real person. By the way. Eloquent, <laughs> but she can say <laughs> she's real. So you, it's easy to have real, authentic conversations. Well, you know, I think John is one of the most creatively brilliant people I know. But what I've loved observing and learning from is the way creativity informs every aspect of his life, including our relationship. Mm. And so one example of that is we both travel a lot for work in non-pandemic times. And because of that, have to spend sometimes several weeks apart. And he came up with this idea early on in our relationship, which was to write each other a letter mm. every day by hand. 
instead of doing like your morning morning pages or writing in a journal, he would write a letter by hand, take a photo of it and text it to me. And it brought me back to those letters (gasps) that I got on the road trip. Wow. And Mm. I think that there's sometimes certain things that you can only say in the written word that you don't even maybe know you need to say that come out when you're writing letters. Um, But you're always doing stuff like that. You're always finding creative ways for Mm. us to deepen our relationship and to stay connected. By the way, that is the most beautiful and thoughtful and smart. I was thinking, write a letter, but how are you ever going to get it? You take a picture and text it so you can actually read the handwriting. Brilliant. Right? <laughs> Joel and I are stealing that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I have to tell you, it's so beautiful because watching your story from the beginning unfold, and I've been, I've been reading and watching a lot leading up to this interview, and sitting here in this moment and looking at you two is so beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Love is in the air, baby. Oh. Yes. <laughs> All right, Suleika, John, thank you guys so much. We appreciate you being on Making Space. You know, Candace, it's so hard to believe that you first met Bob Saget back when you were 10 years old. You're 45 now. It's been 35 years of knowing and loving Bob Saget. Do you remember the very first time you met him? I do remember. I I do. We were doing our pilot episode for Full House and Bob is so tall. You know, he's 6'4 and I was 10 years old. I'm still not that much taller (laughs) than when I was 10, but, but he kneeled down to me and got eye to eye with me and he said, hi, I'm Bob and I'm going to be your dad. I'm playing your dad. So I want you to feel comfortable and we're going to be friends. And he was just so warm and inviting. And I remember that as a kid, he made me feel instantly comfortable with him. And he was just so sweet. And it really kicked off an incredible 35 year friendship. Well, for you as a young actress, to be able to be yourself, you have to be able to share like what's on your mind, what's on your heart. Mm -hmm. Was he a place that you could go to do that? He was. It's one one of the things that made Bob so special. Bob was so vulnerable. He was so emotionally available all the time. And he was really the first person in my life as a man that I saw cry and have those emotions right at the forefront of his conversations. And he wasn't afraid of them. He wasn't embarrassed by them. And that's what made your connection with Bob so great. And that's what made mine so great with him because I felt so safe with him. And it was like, there wasn't anything that I couldn't say or share with him and he would be right in that moment with you if you were hurting he would hurt with you you would see the tears well up in his eyes he would breathe with you he just yeah was an incredibly available emotional person I mean that's so I I I understand why you didn't forget the moment when you watch a grown man tear up in front of you do you remember Mm -hmm. anything specific or do you just remember those emotions Well, there's a a lot that I remember because we've been friends for so long and, you know, Bob, Bob has dealt with so much death in his life with his sisters and his uncles and, and his parents. So Bob was never afraid to talk about it and show it. And, you know, he always dealt with that in a, in a comedic way, but there was always so much sadness and hurt behind it. And that's how he handled it. So there were many times, I mean, I literally growing up with Bob and not just on television, but we were friends. Like Bob is my whole, not only childhood, but my, my teenage years. I mean, we used to go to Jerry's Deli all the time and we just drive around and listen to music. And sometimes we'd have those conversations. Like he would just like feel his sister's presence and we would just sit and feel that you know Bob is a remarkable person and um 
I, I just, I've never had a friendship like the one I've had with him. And it, that's what, why it makes it so hard. <laughs> you said Bob is a remarkable person. You talk about him like he's here still. I can't, I, I can't believe he's gone forever. I just can't. I, my, my brain has not um, comprehended that yet. Um, you know, I think for, for even TV viewers, again, you might think like, oh, he, he played your dad on TV, but Bob was so much more than that. I mean, really one of my closest friends for 35 years. So to, to think that um, he's not here and we're not going to have that last, you know, another joke or another hug or um, just another bit of ridiculousness in life is, is, um, Oh, it's almost unbearable for me to think about. What did you lose when he passed? Um, Bob was available and there for everyone that he knew. But Bob, Bob was that person that no matter what happened, Bob would drop anything for you in a second, in a heartbeat. And you didn't even have to be his best friend for him to do that. I mean, that's how huge his heart was. But when, you know, being someone that was very close to him, losing him it, it is, um, he... I don't selfishly. I just think he's just, he, he was just someone that you could count on and would love you no matter what, and just, and be there. And so that's, there are very few friends in life like that. And that is the hardest part of the loss is just that, that friendship that's unconditional that, mm. I mean, it's, it's mm. a lifetime, but I guess our lifetime is, you know, finished on earth <laughs> for now. For now. It's a good way to end that sentence for now. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. News is happening now. Are you ready? Look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. Tonight, the major announcement of the COVID vaccine. And this is a significant moment. Your news, whenever it happens, wherever you are, it's here now. It's funny because when I watched John Mayer break down and I watched John Stamos and I watched you and I watched all these people in his life, I don't think America realized just how many people he touched. The number of people who have come out, the tributes, the beautiful uh, fundraising events that are going on. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've seen this in my lifetime with someone in Hollywood that is so universally loved and cared for. And it, you know, it just, it just struck me. He was all that, wasn't he? He really was all that. It is remarkable to me. I mean, I've always known how special he is, his close friends do, but Bob was friends with everyone and, and from, from all walks of life. 
-hmm. And so to see so many people coming together, I'm glad that the world is getting to hear how much more there was to Bob. Um, He was a great humanitarian. He tirelessly raised money for scleroderma uh, research foundation over the years. Again, he would drop anything for anyone and he just had a heart of gold. Mm -hmm. And on top of it, he made you laugh. Like he was just, it was the best combination of, of all different traits that you could imagine together. And that was Bob. You know, you remember the first time you met him. And I wonder what was the last communication you had with him? Um, it was just a few, just two weeks before he passed. I'm actually going to grab my, my phone. I'm so scared that I'm going to pull up his text and then accidentally delete it one day. Like it scares me so much because I don't ever want to lose this. But um, Bob and I talked just a couple weeks before he passed and um, (laughs) we were going to have dinner and we got into a little tiff. And his flight was delayed. We ended up not having dinner. But in in Bob fashion, the next day, he wrote me like what would be pages long of a text. And he was apologizing, saying he was cranky and he was just so he was just so sorry. And um, he said, oh, now I feel even worse. I was so wrong. You're like my favorite person on the earth. And I acted like Dolly. I was getting ready to take a late flight and I was annoyed. Dolly was his mom. (laughs) And he said, you're one of the few that understands that if I act like Dolly, I'm not the best at my game that day. (laughs) Ha ha. And Bob went on and on and on in the text. And he said at the end, I love you more. I love you more. Um, for sure. I love you more for the trouble you're giving me, if that's even possible. Mm-hmm. And I wrote back, I love you. I could never be mad at you. Roll my eyes at you? Yes, but never mad. And I love that you being Dolly, that made me laugh out loud. I loved your mom. And he just wrote back, I loved you. My mom loved you too. How you start things in life and how <laughs> are very important pieces. And yeah. that's a beautiful, beautiful last exchange. I love your sweatshirt. Everyone's talking about your sweatshirt. It says, what, love like Jesus, hug like Bob. Bob Is that right? Sackett. Bob Sackett. Okay, brilliant. A, B, like, uh, it's raising money, isn't it? It is actually, I just designed the sweatshirt selfishly for, for me, I, for Kelly, for, I I made 10 of them. And, um, you know, I don't think there's a a person that can showcase love for the world more than Jesus, but Bob gave the best hugs ever. So those are like the two that have been put on the pedestal for me, love like Jesus and a hug like Bob Saget. And it, it, a bunch of people said, oh, can I get one? Can I get one? So I teamed up with the shop Forward and all the proceeds, 100% of them have gone to the Scleroderma Research Foundation and we've raised over $200,000 so far. Wow. That's yeah. One sweatshirt that you, that you got for you and Kelly and the rest. That's amazing. I know. He, you know, I think it was such a shock to everybody when he passed. Did he, and since you were in more communication with him than most, did he seem like healthy, okay? Like, I think everyone yes. was- Yes. I mean, as I said, we, he was, he was on the road doing a standup. He was just loving it, was healthy, was fine. And yeah, Bob just also was not, didn't complain in that way. He just was going and he was on a roll. That's why it was so shocking mm-hmm. because he had done the show that night. I mean, what a way to go. 
in that sense, he, he, he left us, but he had just finished what he loved doing two hours of stand up, which is almost unheard of. He had like an extra long night because he, it was just going so well. Mm -hmm. And that was it. You know, I, that's why it was so, it was so shocking to all of us. Cause there were no, there were any signs of <laughs> that anything would be wrong. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. The Sunday Sit Down with Willie Geist podcast. It's the conversations you want to have with the people you'd love to meet. Get your money's worth. Unedited, unfiltered. See ya. Sit down with Willie and listen wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. The Sunday Sit Down with Willie Geist podcast. It's the conversations you want to have with the people you'd love to meet. Get your money's worth. Unedited, unfiltered. See ya. Sit down with Willie and listen wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. I believe, I believe. Every dream, journey, and triumph. And it all starts here. United States, let's go! Feel the magic every day. The excitement is in the air. At the Winter Olympics, today is where the games begin. In the City of Angels, two kindly old ladies wanted to help homeless men get off the streets forever. And so they did. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, the new podcast from Dateline and Keith Morrison. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Was he proud of your career? <laughs> Bob was so proud of my career. He really was. He was a big cheerleader for me. I mean, I know now as a parent, when you watch someone grow up from a child to an adult and see what they've done, he was so incredibly supportive. And that's what was so awesome about Bob because we had this close friendship. And, you know, if people see Bob stand up, they, you know, he has a different side to him in his standup. It's not family friendly standup. And so that would always be a question like, how, how can you guys be friends? And it's like, well, I grew up with Bob. So I understand his sense of humor. I too have a sense of humor, <laughs> but I can also separate that person that's, you know, on the stage making jokes to get the laugh and the real heart behind a person and their love and their friendship and their kindness. And, and so Bob was so wonderful in that way and supportive of me and, and yet would tell me like, he would invite me to things all the time in the stand-up world, but then say, you're invited, but don't come. <laughs> don't come because I know you this will like cross a line for you you're not going to enjoy it you're not going to laugh so like I love you you can come if you want to but don't come brilliant brilliant and that's like a, what a real friend does just lastly Candace I know he was proud of your career we all follow your career I know you always have another project in the hopper so are you working on something right now what do you have that's coming out I have another Aurora Tea Garden mystery that is airing on February 20th. This is our 18th movie in the franchise. I'm shocked. <laughs> yeah, it's been a lot. That's on the Hallmark Movies and Mysteries channel. And the special thing about this one is called Haunted by Murder. These are all family friendly, by the way. You can watch them with your kids. But... This is about a haunted house, and my daughter is actually in this movie. And Lexa Doig, who plays my best friend in the series, her daughter is also in this movie. And the two of them are playing us, our characters, as teenagers. Okay. So we have some flashbacks, and it's like, it's amazing. <laughs> it's really oh, fun. That, 
That is awesome. Candace, thank you so much. What a beautiful and tender tribute uh, to Bob. Boy, thank you for sharing. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Hoda. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? News is happening now. Look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. Tonight, the major announcement of the COVID vaccine. And this is a significant moment. Your news, whenever it happens, wherever you are, it's here now. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. In the wake of the sudden passing of beloved comedian Bob Saget, friends and fans and colleagues have been sharing countless stories of his remarkable kindness and generosity. But for the first time now, we're about to hear from the person who knew him best recently and really just maybe loved him the most. I Although think there's so. a good competition for that. I'd say so. Kelly Rizzo, what a wonderful, wonderful human being. I got a chance to share an emotional conversation with Kelly. While she says this is the most difficult time in her life, she also says it's also easy to know what her mission will be moving forward. She says it's spreading Bob's legacy of love and laughter. Kelly, first of all, I just want to say the entire country feels like we're holding your hands, your collective hands. I want to know just how you're doing today. Well, I was just telling some of my family that today's a little bit, there's a little bit more of a sense of calm. I think you get to a point where your body will just physically not let you cry anymore, or at least all day. Still, every second is is horrible, but you start to come to terms with it a little bit. Six years ago, Bob Saget and Kelly Rizzo, a food and travel blogger from Chicago, met after connecting on Instagram. Married since 2018, friends say they had a love for the ages. I'm watching you and you're sitting in your home that you shared with with Bob. And I just wondered if you're remembering all the, the little things, if that pops up. Well, it's impossible here not to, but the support has been that, that has been the one silver lining from this is the incredible outpouring of love and support, not only from just everybody that loved Bob, but also for me and just from his friends and family. It's been, I don't know how else I'd be getting through this right now. The number of people, Kel, who loved Bob is just, I, I can't even quantify. I heard someone say that Bob was an I love you guy. He put it all out there. He told everyone that he loved. And I mean, quite frankly, anyone he met and even spent any time with at all, he told them he loved them endlessly and tirelessly. And that was his entire message. If you knew Bob and he loved you, you knew it. There was never, ever a doubt in your mind. I mean, even at his, at, at his memorial, there were a lot of people there and every single person was pretty much like, oh, I talked to Bob last week. I'm like, hmm. how did he have the time hmm. to talk to everybody and tell everybody that he loved them all the time? It was just amazing. We had an interview with, with Mike Young, who's, you know, a comedian and dear friend of Bob's. He said something, Kel, that struck um, struck me. He said, most comedians, after a stand-up gig, they catch the last flight home. He said, not Bob. Bob wanted to catch the first flight home. He wanted to be with you, Kelly. And he said that that their love was was perfect. Yeah. Sorry. Um, that was what was always so special is every time he would be out of town, he would always try to 
he would, you know, he would work so hard and he, um, you know, he'd love to sleep in, but when he was away, he would always try to, he would still wake up at, you know, go to bed at two and then wake up at four so he could be on the 6 a.m. flight so he could come home just so we could spend time together. So, you know, he valued every single second that we had together. So that's why it's, you know, this is so heartbreaking. But at the same time, I know that we, you know, every second that we had together was just maximized to the fullest. And we absolutely just, there was nothing, you know, left unsaid and nothing left on the table. Mm -hmm. So those are the things that I'm just trying to hold on to, you know. You know, I feel like everyone felt like they knew Bob because everyone mm -hmm. grew up watching him or, or even young kids now were watching him again on TV. But uh, Kel, who was the Bob Saget like at dinner when there was no audience? It was still the same. And he just tried to make everybody feel special and happy and comfortable. And it's funny, like our, our dry cleaners, he has... I always joke that he had a deeper relationship with them than he had with anybody, you know, like they love him and he loved them. And his constant message was just treat everybody with kindness because, you know, he'd gone through so much in his life and he knew how hard life could be. And so he always was just so kind and loving to everybody. And he was just, I'm sorry, he was just such a, he was just the best man I've ever known in my life. And he was just so kind and so wonderful. And everybody that was in his life knew it. <laughs> and even anybody that would just casually meet him was like, wow, this was a special guy. And he was yours. And by all accounts, he was living his best life. Did you think he was feeling okay during during all this time? All I'll say is that he was very happy and he was just thrilled to be back out on the road. And he was also very sensitive and just all the weight of everything going on in the world right now. He, it was just weighing very heavily on him. And that's mm. why he felt more compelled than ever to make people laugh and bring people together. And he did it up until the very last moments. You know, we've all lost someone in our life. And sometimes you hang on to the last text, the last conversation, <laughs> the last connection. Is that is that Kel the case with you? I'm just very grateful that it was all, I love you so much. Mm -hmm. It was, I think I said, I love you dearly. And he said, I love you endlessly. And then mm -hmm. he said, I said, I can't wait to see you tomorrow. And then, you know, it was just all very, it was just all love. Wow. Yeah, yeah. that's, that is, that's beautiful, Kel. Um, when we were seeing the images of everyone saying goodbye at the funeral, is there anything that you feel comfortable sharing about what it was like? Were you able to speak? I don't think I'll get too much into it, but I did speak and it was just the whole thing as painful as it was, was beautiful to be surrounded by so many people who loved him and who loved each other. I can't even verbalize the level of support. I'm so grateful for it. One of the things that he was very passionate about was uh, scleroderma that took his sister Gay's life. And one of the most beautiful things of this was n nobody said, hey, everybody go donate to scleroderma in Bob's honor. But do you know what everyone did? They donated. They, they did it. Bob was dedicated to finding a cure for scleroderma, an autoimmune disease that took his sister's life. The Scleroderma Research Foundation estimates that Bob raised more than $26 million for the SRF in his lifetime. He had three life's works. One was his children, next was comedy, and then the SRF. He spent over 30 years tirelessly working so hard to try to find a cure for scleroderma. So that's why anything that I can do to help keep that legacy going and just help with the SRF because it meant so much to him. As I'm sitting here reflecting and sitting with you is that Bob spent his life and he sort of united people just by being himself. He wasn't trying. And in his passing, he's doing it again. I've never seen anything like this. It's it's unbelievable. The just the outpouring, but mm -hmm. the consensus overall of what an amazing person he was, whether people knew him or didn't know him, because one way or another, he was in your living room since the 80s yeah. or 
you know, you went to shows, I mean, whatever it is, it was, um, he felt like he was everyone's, you know, dear friend. Nobody will ever be like Bob. And I think he just kind of lived his life unafraid, which is what struck me. He found love again in his 60s. He told his friends, I love you. He was back on stage. Like the guy was fearless. And I think that's what struck me about it. And she loved all parts of him. But, and even, you know, on stage, he had that like that raunchy side. She yeah. was like, but that was part of him. <laughs> yeah. He wasn't afraid. No, he's truthful. Yeah, he you really know? told the truth. It's just like, it just is so moving. I hope it's comforting to her that everyone, so many people just mm -hmm. feel so connected to him and are just missing him and loving him. And what a wonderful legacy to leave. Well, one of the things that's become obvious over the last couple of weeks is Bob Saget was a special guy. Mm -hmm. Kelly? Yeah. Also pretty special. Uh, amazingly special. Yeah. And Bob made friendships late in life. You saw John Mayer just mm -hmm. sobbing after Bob passed. And you just thought, like, wow. He kept, he, his circle kept yeah. getting bigger and bigger. here it is time for pop star plus and coming up on today's show we're celebrating the fresh prince of bel-air with the new reboot set to be released after the super bowl we've got an interview with karen parsons who played hillary on the original and a great moment from our vaults with the one and only will smith himself but first let's see what was going on on today's pop star First up, breaking news here on Popstart. Hot off the press is the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame announced the lineup of nominees for this year's class. Here are some of the names in the running on the ballot for the very first time. Wow. Yes. One and only American oh, treasure, the commander of them all, Dolly Parton. Yes. yes. Finally. Uh, Joined by list. Eminem. Yep. Mm -hmm. Savannah, oh, are you listening? Yes. Duran Duran. Yes. My what? Richie, how's yes. that already? Lionel. Yes. Carly Carly Simon, oh, wow. all of them nominated else? once again more, more, is music more. and Twitter icon Diane more. Warwick. Yes, yes. She's joined by fellow artist Pat Benatar. Yes. And how is it taking so long for Beck to get in? What is that? Man. Every how many kids? There are 17 kids? nominees total oh. this year. Oh, okay. okay. We will find out who gets in oh, when they announce them. Come on. In. Dolly's not in? Well, we're going to find out in May. Wow. Okay. All right, next up, this series looks great on Paramount Plus. It's called The Offer. The new series is heading to Paramount Plus, anyway. It's set to tell the dramatic real life story behind the making of The Godfather. Oh. In the trailer, we get a first look at Miles Teller as award winning producer Albert S. Ruddy and a peek at his desperate fight to get the Mario Puzo iconic gangster novel onto the big screen. This is a story about family, it's Shakespeare. Agencies won't touch us. It's epic. You want a big producer? Bang, borrow, steal, do whatever it takes. Gangster movies are dead. We will stop out the hatred. If I say I'm gonna handle something, I'm gonna handle it. And the prejudice. It. You're still gonna try to make this thing? Sinatra wants us to shut the picture down. What is our opening line? I believe in America. I mean, it just looks good. Brilliant. 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 Watching 1883 on Paramount Plus right now. That this is going to come yeah. out. They're doing yeah. some good things over there. Show also stars Ted Lasso's Juno Temple. That's who plays Keeley. Oh, right. She's, uh, she's great in it too. And American Crime Stories. Colin Hanks is in it. It's a great cast. The Offer is the name of it, and starts streaming oh, on April 28th. I give it a good sell there. Yeah. Yeah. Real yeah. Good. Yeah. It was earnest. It was okay. Yeah. I like that. Finally, our Super Bowl commercial kickoff all week. We're giving you a sneak peek at some of the biggest ads for the big game. We used to wait for the big game to see all these yeah. ads. Yeah. Yeah. Now we just yeah. get them here. That's it. Roll this morning we've got a first look at Lay's Potato Chips, their first Super Bowl campaign in 17 years, huh. and it stars the very funny Paul Rudd and Seth Rogen. Here it is. Nervous? Oh, Lay's brings back so many good memories. Remember our road trip in 97? Our first real heart to heart. I've never seen any of your movies. Not even the ones we're in together. Remember when you bought your first house? You ready? Seth, do you? I do. And Janet, do you? That's a yes. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Logan actually created that ad with his oh. longtime friend and writing partner, Evan Goldberg. <laughs> they worked together on Super Bad, and this is the end. Oh. And don't forget to tune in, of course, to The Big Game. It's next Sunday, February 13th. Where else? Right here on NBC. And, of course, streaming on Peacock. Awesome. And that is okay. your pop star today. 
Let's get to a few more headlines after all the show is called Pop Star Plus. First up, and just like that, more good news for fans of the new Sex and the City series after revealing that HBO Max will release a behind the scenes documentary following Thursday's season finale. Sarah Jessica Parker is giving hope this may not be the end of the new chapter. SJP telling Variety that she and showrunner Michael Patrick King are already talking about a second season. The actress and executive producer sharing in an interview, there feels like there's momentum. As for the return of Kim, as for the return of Kim Cattrall's character, the beloved Samantha Jones, don't hold your breath, Parker and King both saying there are no plans to bring her back into the story at this time but maybe later, who knows? Next up, David Letterman, the man who started it all, returned to Late Night on Tuesday to celebrate the show's 40th anniversary with current host Seth Meyers. And taking a look down memory lane, Dave shared how before he landed in the Late Night time slot, he had a short-lived stint hosting during our current Today Show hours. We had blown up the NBC daytime schedule a year right. previously. I, uh, we had a show, a lot of us had a show that we thought was just great. And it was on for 90 minutes live, like 9 to 1030 on, on NBC. And it replaced two or three uh, game shows. And it, it turned out uh, America didn't want them replaced. <laughs> C certainly didn't want them replaced by me. But when, when you're Letterman said his daytime show only lasted for a couple of months. A year later, it did land him an 11-year run as the host of Late Night. And those are your headlines up next. Karen Parsons, who played Hillary on the original Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, shares her favorite moments from the show. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcast. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Welcome back to Popstar Plus. In just 11 days, Peacock, of course, part of our parent company, NBC Universal, is going to be releasing the highly anticipated Bel Air. So today we thought we'd take a moment to check out, well, the roots of that reboot. We're going to get a visit from Karen Parsons, who played Hillary on the original show. Here is today's flashback. I think I probably hear the line, Daddy, can I have $300 more than anything? Dad, I need $300. <laughs> How would I describe Hillary Banks? You know, it's, the way I've described her has changed over the years. I still think she's incredibly self-centered um, and she's just myopic. You know, she's she's been grown up as Daddy's little girl, first child. And it was a girl, you know, I just imagine that they dressed her up in all kinds of little fancy little frilly things and everything she wanted. They, you know, they gave her and I have a, my first child was a daughter. So I'm starting to even understand it in that regard. I think I underestimated a lot of things about her. I think she's she's very determined. She's so self-centered and seemingly myopic, but at the same time, she's so she she's very focused and determined and has confidence. You know, the, the confidence we all wish we had. Com if she wants to do something, she knows she can do it. She's going to do it because that's what she wants. And that's it. And she's going to get it because she always gets what she wants. You know, so it's, nothing stops her. And I think that's a quality of Hillary's that I love and I wish I could have a little bit more of. Um, and I do think that she has a lot more heart. You know, she has a lot more heart than she might always get credit for. <laughs> Look, th there he goes. <laughs> Trevor! Will you marry me? Yeah, the, 
the, the bungee jumping episode will forever be my bittersweet um, episode because I remember when I read the script for the first time, there was this horrible heartbreak of, oh my gosh, Brian Stokes Mitchell's not going to be on the show anymore because Brian, who played Trevor, was so wonderful. I loved working with him. I loved the Hillary Trevor romance. <laughs> it was really fun. And so it was horribly disappointing to read like, oh no, you know, it, it, Trevor's gone, Brian's gone. And then you just see the way it all, how it happened and how it played out. And then of course that's the, the, the laugh, the part that was so funny. Yes. Yes, what? Yes, your highness. <laughs> I think my favorite episode still for me to do, and I liked it how it came out too, was in the first season when Hillary drops out of college and is blackmailed by both Will and Carlton. You know, and when I go to my brother for help, um, I'll never forget when we taped that episode. And it was the first season, and so I didn't know a lot of how the audience was taking Hillary. You know, I hadn't had a lot of feedback from people yet, but I was assuming people probably weren't going to like her that much because everyone loved Will, and she had this <laughs> kind of thing with him. And uh, we got to the part where I go to Carlton for help and say he's making me, you know, clean his dirty draws or lucky draws or whatever, and he says, will you clean mine? Is he making you clean his room? No. Will you clean mine? <laughs> and when that happened, he turned on me. The audience did not just start clapping. They started stomping in the stands. They started stomping their feet 